doctorate candidate please uh, give hands yeah because this is yours this is actually yours no and this is special specials for doctorate we are not mixing with others you know so this is for special but then uh, i don't know maybe because of uh, some of our uh, doctorate still uh, still with the two years uh, experience right uh, sleeping at home and uh, getting lazy and lazy right and uh, so that's why uh, actually i'm i'm asking them to come to join and in the letter i said that the professor team is waiting for you what i mean is that uh, because of uh, we have been we have been the two years since then covid right most of us at home right and what happened uh, the academic climate and academic atmosphere is declining so i think this is the way that we would like to start to have and to improve our academic climate yeah but uh, now happy right is almost full hopefully then uh, soon is getting full uh, this uh, fall right and <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen uh, well, I think uh, accounting has become uh, our ideology, right? Ideology for profession, ideology profession. Because if someone asking you uh, what uh, to be professional, then accounting is your professional, right? So that's why I say that uh, this is your ideology. So if any occasion in relation to the accounting, please come you know, to join and gathering and having some discussion. This is what I would like to say that uh, if we neglecting this kind of environment, then of course our atmosphere will be not getting, uh, getting better and better. So that's why I'm asking you now to gather together in our international uh, doctoral uh, colloquium. Uh, Vice Rector, Professor Gukus, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this idea actually come from uh, the way that we having uh, programs uh, from the university and then uh, following up by our department, so-called as three-in-one programs, you know, three-in-one programs. And I remember it was last semester, I contributed, uh, especially for the doctorate, three subjects, you know, three courses uh, to have the three and one, okay? And then from that idea, it come into mind that we would like to always uh, thinking that how to improve uh, the atmosphere of academics, you know, uh, then uh, especially for our doctorate, uh, programs uh, getting involved in the situations where they are really keen to study right mm -hmm. to study and gathering together right well of course uh, at home is also study right you are learning there but different totally different you know uh, when you come to the campus and meeting the, the friends professors uh, lectures and some other day with this kind of environment, then the, your academics, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, atmosphere will be getting better and better. So that's why I think this is part of the way that we would like to contribute so that uh, you are getting uh, involved in a really uh, embedded in your uh, academic life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> The, the purpose of uh, the colloquium that I also just mentioned, uh, the first is, of course, to improve our academic atmosphere. And then the second is to provide an international forum to our doctorate candidates. And uh, 
Yeah, there are many, especially for the international forum, but most of them are having uh, such kind of uh, Zoom kind of meeting, right? But of course, different. We're having gesture, your behavior, you could see it's other and have some discussion that will be different. So we would like to start with it. And then the third, uh, the objective is to enrich uh, your portfolio, right? Especially the portfolio of paper publications and seminar involvement or doctorate uh, uh, involvement. So this is uh, what uh, I mean by having the three objectives of yeah, having a doctoral, uh, international doctoral uh, colloquium. And actually, I also would like to report to the team, uh, since then the team uh, uh, is not really very well. Uh, yeah, hopefully then soon you get things well and join with us. Uh, <clears throat> according to the committees, uh, organizing committee, the participants uh, for this international doctor colloquiums are uh, hundreds. Yeah. In fact, less than what uh, I could identify with the number of active uh, students in our program. In, active, uh, in our active student is about 125. But in fact, according to the list, you know, uh, participate uh, 100, okay? So, yeah, well, I, I think this is very sad, you see. Hopefully then, uh, I hope uh, we're still opening, you know, mm -hmm. we're still just opening, and hopefully then they are entering uh, registration and then getting more and more uh, participants. And the papers that we receive, yeah, we divide it into five rooms, right, five rooms. One, two, three, four, you know, five here. And each rooms uh, average five papers to be presented. Yeah, five papers to be presented. So uh, actually the number is 23, but then for the average is five, you know. And luckily the organizing committee will give you awards. The number of awards, uh, according to last night uh, meeting, uh, there will be eight type of categories awards. One so called the best presenters, yeah, best painters, presenters. We still having uh, some possibility one and two, right? But still wait for it. For so number one is uh, best, uh, what do you call, it? best presenters. And then we also giving uh, categories of best papers for the categories of uh, research methodology, research methodology in the paradigm of uh, qualitative or qualitative paradigm, and then uh, non-mainstream paradigm. Sorry, uh, mainstream paradigms and non-mainstream paradigm best paper. Uh, so there are three, right? Already, and then the four uh, novelty best novelty. Yeah, best novelty. Sorry if I'm uh, having mistakes in pronunciation. And then the, the uh, number five, there will be best for the research finding. Research finding. Research finding. And then the best papers for the categories of contributions to the practice. Yeah. If you are having paper good in practices, then there will be chance to get the award for the best paper categorized uh, for uh, contribution to the practice. And then also a category of uh, contributions to theory, yeah? contribution to theory. And the last, I think this is in relation to the G20 and then uh, to the SDGs contribution to the SDGs. So there are eight, yeah, eight categories, yeah, eight categories. Yeah, I do hope uh, that will be uh, beneficial for you uh, to the uh, research uh, endeavor uh, for your academic uh, life. 
All right, so I think uh, this is, uh, uh, that's all I would like to uh, say to you. And the last thing that I would like to uh, say uh, to the final, that uh, of course, uh, during uh, this occasion or the event of the International Doctor Colloquium, um, if any, some mistake, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally, I'm as a chair of the organizing committee, I would like to uh, an apology, giving, uh, <clears throat> uh, sending you an apology. And, and of course, uh, I also would like to thank, especially for the Department of Accounting, you know, for giving spot uh, to this uh, occasion become possible, you know, and also the dean. Uh, as the top management at the faculty. I think that's all. And uh, again, uh, I would like to uh, please you uh, to join and until the end of uh, this colloquium. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Professor Eko Gani Sukoharsono, PhD. Um, I do agree with Prof. Eko that actually this event uh, really enriched our knowledge and also wider our uh, networking since this is the first time we can meet up together uh, offline and also online. So once again, thank you very much, Prof. Eko. Next, uh, while waiting for the deans to come and together with us and give him a speech, we can jump to agree the sessions about the general discussions. There are four sessions and each of those sessions will enlighten with different themes, but still connected. And what are they? I'm sure that all of us here are really curious about what we are going to discuss, but I'm going to give one clue for the first session. The first session is talking about the corporate governance. And the first keynote speaker, I believe, he has a corporate governance between the academical and also the experiences. As currently he is as the vice rector in finance and general affairs and also the active lecturer in accounting departments. The keynote speaker is Professor Gugus Irianto, SAMSA, PhD, AKCA. And at the first session, the associate prof uh, Wurian Anayani, PhD, will be the moderator. She is one of the active lecture and accounting department. So together we will come, Associate Professor Wurian Andayani and Professor Gugus Irianto, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, thank you, uh, Master of Ceremony. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For ladies and gentlemen and all of participants of International Doctoral Colloquium Doctoral Program in Accounting Universitas Brawijaya. Uh, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Wurian Andayani, the moderator of this section. In this section, we will discuss uh, corporate governance with our table presenter, Professor Gugus Irianto. Uh, before we start, I would like to show and highlight the relevant experiences of Professor Gugus Irianto. Professor Gugus Irianto is a lecturer in, uh, in the Accounting Department Faculty of Economy and Business, Universitas Brawijaya for 35 years. Uh, he is an active lecturer in undergraduate, master, and doctoral programs. He pursued bachelor degrees in Universitas Brawijaya, master degrees in California State University and PhD in Wollongong, Australia. Before we start the presentation, allow me to inform you that at the end of the presentation, we will discuss, or uh, we will have a discussion. Should you have any question, kindly save them until after the presentation. Without further ado, please welcome Professor Gugus Irianto. Thank you very much to Gurian. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Selamat pagi menjelang siang. Mohon izin saya lepas masker nanti dipakai lagi. Yang saya hormati Head of the Department of Counting, Ibu Yeni. Yeni mestinya di sini ya, Ibu Yeni. Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, Chair of the Doctoral Program in Accounting, Profesor Eko Ganis, para senior guru dan juga sekaligus sahabat, ada Prof. Ali, Prof. Bambang Ariyadi, tadi Prof. Tisarja ya. Kemudian kolega dosen di jurusan. Uh, all the participants of this uh, doctoral colloquium. Honorable speaker from various countries, I think from the UK, Ghana, and others. And particularly, Dr. Wurian as the chair of this discussion. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thanks to the dean, head of the department, chair of this counting study program, <clears throat> that allow me or giving opportunity to me to share. Uh, Maybe my experience, not mention about knowledge, because uh, if you are in my position right now, actually it's very little time to learn, to read. So I may learn a lot from all the participants, I think, during the discussion. Secondly, I would like to ask to all of you, maybe I will use uh, both Bahasa and English. I imagine then one day, uh, just like in Japan or in another country, our language will be one of the international language. And as a public servant, actually, I have the opportunity, I mean, I have the obligation to use uh, our language most in most uh, uh, activities. Is it okay, bro? Yeah. Maybe to, strength, to stressing something that uh, is need uh, to... Say in Bahasa, I will use Bahasa. My English is not as good as yours, so I will use the good Bahasa Indonesia in English. <clears throat> uh, I think today is a good start for all of us because uh, the International Doctoral Consortium invited uh, speaker from four, four countries, in, including Indonesia. And I think in the near future, we will expand these activities to include uh, many doctoral students from our uh, partner countries, I think. <laughs> This morning, I would like to share, uh, let me share. Can you read it? <clears throat> so, as I said, Professor, I think to Dr. Wurian, Prof. Eko, Bapak Ibu semua, 
uh, I'm sorry if the title is not as you are expecting to hear or to read this morning. But I would like to share my experience by exploring uh, my experience during uh, my duty as Vice Rector for Financial and Resources Affairs about good university governance. This is uh, just mostly about the, my experience. Uh, we can have a different view to see the practice of university governance. That's, I think it's okay. And this is, I hope, uh, give an opportunity to all of us to see and then uh, to discuss several issues, uh, at least in my view about the university governance. <laughs> Let's start from a uh, short definition about governance and good governance. I think there's a lot of uh, meaning that we can observe, we can share in Google. You can find a lot of definition, a lot of meanings about governance and good governance. As you see, this I, I, I quote from Governance Institute of Australia. It's the system by which an organization has control and operates, and the mechanism by which it and its people are had to account. Uh, in my imagination, talking about government, talking about how to manage organization, how to manage people, how to manage the system and a lot of things. Another view, governance is the exercise of political, economic, administrative authority in a way to manage a nation affair. I think this is uh, the context of the nation, but we are talking in the context of organization. From, I think from the bottom, I mean, for the low level of our organization, uh, we can see how is the practice of uh, governance and the practice of good governance. If we observe or read uh, several publications from OECD, mostly talking about corporate governance. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, there's no not mention mostly on like university governance or others. But if we read from many publication from Comité National Corporate Governance, KNKG, we can see several publication in various sector. So we can learn, for example, governance for uh, insurance companies, governance for banking, governance for other type uh, of business. Please check and recheck about this one because uh, I spare a short of time to observe this from, from the various website. Jadi Bapak Ibu, mohon maaf kalau ada yang miss ya, but please, read and recheck and don't do not quote from from this maybe i i worry if i miss something <clears throat> uh, the initial development about particularly corporate governance i think it was initiated by oecd in 1999 and then a lot of revision i see a revision in 2004 and uh, the last thing uh, revision on 2022. I think it was present. It will be presented, or it was presented uh, in the meeting in, in Bali in Denpasar. In Indonesia, the initial initiative by Komite Nasional Corporate Governance. Maaf kalau keliru ya KNKG. Baru tahun 2012. 2006, so starting in 2006. So it's quite late for us to learn and to develop about uh, governance. But 
uh, we can see that uh, actually the concept is developing. Jadi bukan konsep yang statis. It's not a static concept. Either it was developed by OECD or it was developed by PNKG. It's always uh, developing. But to some extent, the principle is not uh, much uh, change. Bapak-Ibu, mohon maaf. Ini saya searching, menurut saya ini salah satu one of the good uh, research from Satya Wacana. But please check the original sources because this is from repository. I could not get the name, so I just quote from repository of the UKSB. Uh, this research is quite good because it compares uh, several principles from many uh, institutions that develop uh, corporate governance or governance principles from Asian Development Bank, for Organization for Economic and Development, OECD, from World Bank, from KNKG, and then from other research. Even though I'm not quite agree because uh, one or two, I think Burang means, I don't know, maybe this is from accreditation Burang, uh, and Muhi is not stated clearly, is it the reference, but in terms of the reference that I cited is quite good because uh, he or she make a comparison between uh, government governance principles from one in, from one institution to other and we can see there is a lot of similarities yeah you can see about transparency you can see about accountability you can see about responsibility independency independency fairness and, and others so depending on the organization I summarize that uh, actually the concept of governance itself are is or are developing, not a status, it's dynamic. Secondly, the concept that we can actually develop based on the need of the organization in which we are developing the concept. Jadi ini bukan concept satu-satunya yang harus selalu diikuti. It's developing. Jadi kita punya kesempatan, we have uh, opportunity to develop the principles and then from the principle we can develop uh, many other things based on the principles. Jadi Bapak Ibu for doctoral student, I think it's good opportunity to learn, to expand and then to develop uh, maybe principles and other things about governance linked to the certain organization need. Tidak bisa satu konsep governance dipakai untuk semuanya. Maybe principle is okay to some extent, but I think, I believe that uh, Specific organization need specific principles how to manage its or their organization. Let's see. And then, how is the good? I'm not quite sure whether it's good or not, but how is the good university governor? or university government based on uh, my experience in Brawijaya University. This is my view. Maybe the other person can have a different view. <coughs> Ibu, Ibu, Bapak, Bapak dan seluruh partisipan, ladies and gentlemen. In my view, kalau kita mendiskusikan, kita mengembangkan, if we are discussing or developing corporate or university or other entity governance, I think it's good if we start from an integrative view about the organization itself. 
from can you see that yeah from the share values to achieve the vision and mission of the organization in this case the vision and mission of the university and university governance or good university governance at least its principles it is very important because it will be the foundation of all the matters the kalau good university if good university governance is not well implemented maybe we can have a lot of problem yeah we cannot achieve excellent in research and innovation we cannot achieve excellent in uh, outreach program maybe we cannot achieve excellent in learning or education and maybe we can also we cannot also achieve the vision and mission of the university jadi itu fundamental sekali bapak ibu tapi nanti dalam praktek in practice we have to see different ways in each organization hmm. you may see that uh, i wrote that that the bottom is about their values recently Pravijaya university introduced what we call giraffe sorry if my pronunciation is not quite right as you pay for value in developing and extending the universitas Pravijaya. it's about governance innovation reputation alumni faculty fun and efficiency it's not quite complete actually because if we are talking about efficiency you may also talk uh, about effectiveness about economy and other thing but uh, for the purpose of the university the concept or i don't know maybe including prof eko <laughs> uh, talking about giraffe ini penting bapak ibu core value atau share value mestinya memang digali dari bawah ya yeah? we have uh, to take all the necessary thing to get this i don't know exactly uh, how this was developed but at least Brawijaya University uh, having this kind of uh, uh, core values uh, as a foundation to develop good university governance to achieve its mission vision this is also important jadi kalau mendiskusikan university governance tapi arah universitas tidak jelas itu juga akan susah untuk untuk dikatakan bahwa kita sudah menerapkan university good university governance jadi uh, the roadmap of the university the future direction of the future is also very very important if we are talking about uh, good university governance in every step every phase uh, there is also there's always uh, certain target that must be achieved for example from the year 2022 to 2027 uh, University of Brawijaya has a target like uh, to be one of the world uh, university top university with ranking around 500 jadi harus ada target-target itu tapi itu akan susah untuk dicapai if uh, we could not implement university governance atau good university governance jadi ini juga penting bagi suatu universitas untuk dimiliki sehingga uh, kita tahu the future direction of our our university second thing about organizational structure 
if we are talking about good university governance, we have to learn about the organizational structure. Because our, uh, if we see organization structure, actually we, we can see how the distribution of power in the structure. Bapak Ibu, uh, before Brawijaya achieve the current status as legal entity university, the structure is quite different. Sorry, I just show you about the structure under the coordination of uh, Vice Rector for uh, Keuangan or for Financial and uh, Resources uh, Affair. Dulunya, Bapak Ibu, long time, I mean, uh, when we are under the Badan Layanan Umum status, this uh, scope of uh, responsibility of the Vice Rector for Vice Rector 2 actually not only about financial and resources, but include financial and then resources mean uh, human resources. And then we have to manage asset of the university or sarana-prasarana or infrastructure. We also have to manage uh, the general affairs. Jadi yang lalu itu sebenarnya menurut saya jelek. Ini sudah lebih bagus. Karena ini lebih fokus. Kemudian scope of apa itu tanggung jawabnya sudah lebih 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 sedikit. In comparison to the previous organizational structure. Jadi penting Bapak Ibu, it's very important to prepare uh, or to develop a very good organizational structure. If not, then we will have a lot of problems during the uh, implementation of uh, very, very uh, many activities or program. Ini juga penting. Jadi Bapak Ibu, if we are talking about good university governance, the role and responsibility of each unit, each uh, person in charge, pejabatnya, sangat penting. Kalau ini tidak didefine dengan baik, maka implementasi apa yang disebut good university governance juga menurut saya tidak bisa. This is very important. So what is the role and responsibility of rector? The role and responsibility of the dean, of vice rector, and others. It must be well defined. If not, I'm not quite sure how the organization can run well. Next. In my view, this is also very important. If we are talking about good university government, timeline of planning, execution, and monitoring and evaluation. If we don't have this kind of timeline every year, then uh, the future direction that we show in the previous uh, slide, I think it's very difficult to be achieved. Nah, sayangnya ini tidak mudah Bapak Ibu. Ya, nanti kita bisa diskusi. It's not quite easy. Usually late late and late. Usually. Ya, yeah, you know, I I'm talking about the uh, the real situation if we are working as one of the person in charge in the university. Jadi, ini harus dipunyai Bapak Ibu. Organisasi apapun harus memiliki menurut saya, particularly if we are talking about the university government. Next, maybe number three or number four. Yeah, we still have time. Cool, yeah? Okay. Digital transformation. Before everyone of us born, maybe uh, we will see 
the administrative matters just like this. Kebanyakan Bapak Ibu tugas-tugas administrasi bagi pimpinan dan semuanya dilakukan konvensional, inconventional ways. You can imagine if for example rector, vice rector, the dean and then every day must bring a lot of works. Dan yeah. I have an experience that. Jadi setiap hari mesti pulang membawa dokumen. Itu saya harus menjalani sekian bulan sebelum before this transformation uh, has been done. Susah Bapak Ibu. Jadi kerja harus betul-betul nungguin kertas di era yang seperti sekarang. So digital transformation is a must. Tidak boleh ditinggalkan. Pastor Gugus Irianto, uh, maybe three minutes more. How many? Yeah. Three minutes. Oh, three minutes. Maybe I need about five or ten. Seperti ini, Bapak-Ibu harus sabar ketika membuat transformasi dari pola manual ke digital. From conventional ways to the digital one, to computerized one. Saya harus melakukan kayak gini, Bapak Ibu. Bayangkan wakil rektor di era digitalisasi. Tahun 2000, saya menjadi wakil rektor mulai 2019. Harus telaten, saya uji coba satu. One by one, Bapak Ibu. Oh, kayak gini nggak cocok. Kayak gini nggak cocok. Kayak gini nggak cocok. Inilah Bapak Ibu, ini kan dosen semua. Suatu saat mungkin akan dapat amanah mendapat itu. Dan ini perlu upaya yang berkelanjutan. Every day. Ya, yeah. it's not about the day. Sometimes in the night after subuh prayer. Sometimes I call him. Sometimes I call my friend. Just to transform from the conventional way like this to be like this. Bapak Ibu orang bisa buat program dengan gampang, tapi mengimplementasikan sampai jadi sampai jalan is another thing. Itu kalau nggak telaten, Bapak Ibu nggak duduk, nggak diplototin, tidak akan jalan. Karena pasti apa? Relaktan. Orang yang sudah settle lama bertahun-tahun, it's very difficult to change. Resisten and with many many reason. Itu harus telaten, harus punya determinasi sebagai pimpinan. Kalau enggak enggak bisa jalan. Ya, nah, kemudian uh, this system step by step I convert to monitoring system. Ya. Integrated system is also a very very important. Jadi satu harus terang. Jangan bayangkan Bapak Ibu sistem ini sebelumnya nggak terkoneksi sama sekali ada Pak Yuki enggak. Yang membantu saya. Jadi awalnya dikembangkan sendiri-sendiri karena ada egoisme sektoral. This is not working well. Now without integrated system uh, I think we could not say that we have implemented good university governance. So almost four years uh, with help of many college, uh, I try to work untuk memastikan hal, -hal seperti ini. Nah, ini puncak, salah satu puncaknya. Satu data Universitas Brawijaya. Karena kita menginginkan uh, bahwa all of the information we can generate from one system, academic, financial, human resources, and others. Ini kelihatan gampang, Bapak Ibu, tapi di lapangan is different things. Apa nggak ada problem? Ini problemnya yang saya hadapi. Jadi Bapak Ibu mungkin nanti bisa berbeda ya. Uh, unclear official mission and objective. Sometimes, uh, sometimes we can find that uh, under certain document this is not quite clear. 
that is very important to define vision, mission, objective, very, very clear. So everyone can understand, oh, this is the mission, this is the vision, this is the objective. Improper arrangement of organization structure and task. Tadi saya tunjukkan, uh, I show you in my previous uh, slide, that very important to understand, uh, to construct a very good organization structure. Yang bisa menggambarkan, oh ini hubungan satu organisasi ini, ini tanggung jawabnya ini, dan seterusnya. Kalau enggak, ya, good university governance just uh, hanya sekedar, uh, apa itu namanya? Susah nyebutnya. Old mindset and behavior. Bapak Ibu punya sistem jangan dikira bisa gampang di dan karena orang wah yang dulu begitu saja bisa I use the old system old practice is okay tidak bisa bapak ibu selalu ditolak biasanya seperti itu nah karena itu transformasi harus diikuti dengan pendekatan pendekatan manusia yang lain agar mindset and behavior can be changed sektoral ego and interest You can see that so many subsystem, just I saw in my previous presentation. That's uh, a lot of eco sectoral. It's not easy to to integrate. Yeah, it depends on how we uh, encourage, how we ask them to prepare together to have a new mindset and less with sektoral ego or interest. Undisciplined. Ini Indonesia, Bapak Ibu. Tidak disiplin. Kalau mau sukses, kuncinya memang harus disiplin. Offright procedure. Nah, ini biasanya pimpinan. Apa saya tidak pernah pernah? Itu tidak boleh sering-sering. Uh, only in the case of emergency maybe. Offright procedure. If not then it can lead to something very bad. Conventional waste and system in administrative matter, I just show you. That's uh, another problem. And the last thing, I think, in competence stuff. Maybe you can add more that implementation about good university. Usually, we, uh, in my experience, we face with uh, this kind of problem. This is the last thing, I think. Uh, my presentation, key aspect to ensure that good university is well or can well be implemented. Leadership. So the top leader is very important. In fraud, uh, usually oh, we use the term tone at the top. Jadi mesti kalau bahasa Indonesia kan ada suri tauladan ya Bapak Ibu ya. Tone at the top, courage, visioner, and other things. But leadership is very important. Organizational structure, I just show you. Teamwork. Not superman. Jadi harus teamwork, harus kerja bersama-sama. Sinergi antar unit, sinergi and kolaborasi. Discipline. Discipline and planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation. It's, it's very difficult, Bapak-Ibu. But uh, we must do that. Computer and digitalized system and process. Streamlining business process, trusted, capable, and competent start. It's about integrity. Saya kira ini Bu Rian. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu atas waktunya uh, untuk uh, berkenan. Nanti mohon berkenan berbagi. Uh, kalau ilmunya Bapak Ibu lebih banyak membaca daripada yang menjabat. Yang menjabat habis waktunya. Terima kasih. Uh, kurang lebihnya mohon maaf. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Professor Gugus, for the insightful presentation about good university governance, starting from an integrative view of the organization and good university governance foundation and core value and introduce GIREF. Yeah about governance, innovation, reputation, alumni, faculty, fund, and efficiency.
Uh, Oke. Okay. Uh, XI. Uh, as I have previously mentioned, we will have a discussion. Now I would like to invite three questions from participants. Please raise your hand and mention your name and your institution, institution ya, yeah? your university. And also in uh, bahasa, ya yeah, Prof. Uh, because uh, we have imagined that bahasa Indonesia will become international language, ya. Yeah? Oke, okay. yeah. iya, mention your name and your university. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Prof. My name is Master Mukmin from uh, Doctorate Program of Universitas Brawijaya. Uh, pertanyaannya adalah, uh, jadi pakai bahasa Indonesia, Bu? Ya, bye. All right. Uh, the question is when the university is already integrated and become more efficient and the problem occur uh, will be the efficiency of the uh, uh, employment because you, we, we all know that the technology will reduce the the manpower and will no longer need any human uh, energy to uh, uphold all the institution business So it will be another problem later in the future. So based on your experience, after you all try to integrate the system, especially transforming from the manual into the digital one, uh, is there any kind of that problem occur in uh, your uh, institution that you lead? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Another questions? Yeah, please. Uh, Oke, okay. good morning, Prof. Uh, my name is Iqbal Lutfi from Doctorate Program of Accounting Universitas Brawijaya. My question is, uh, uh, what's your name? Iqbal, Iqbal, Iqbal. Lutfi. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, my question is, uh, Brawijaya University transformed this early years to PTNBH from the BLU status, and this also. Um, impact the how the government works in this university and as you told before in your presentation that everything that we do in manual uh, way before uh, we've done it in system uh, right now so how how these transformations impact uh, what uh, governance system that you imp implement in this university as the core values and maybe the the uh, PTN how way is how the university generate income that's the way I think uh, the how 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 the university generate income we have ego ego is income generating unit so how the governments transform this status to uh, income generating thank you okay uh, one more question maybe from this side Oh, maybe only two questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very short question, but difficult to answer. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, first question from siapa namanya? Uh, what's your name? Mas. Arnold, Mas Nur, Mas Nur, oke, okay. sorry Mas Nur, I'm sorry. Transforming from a conventional ways in managing administrative matters to the digital or computerized one is always uh, bring two different things yeah at least 
I remember several years ago when I was at your age, I think. When I was in the state and learning about management information system. One example is, was I mean, one example was about the problem that people or staff face in postal service. Jadi waktu itu di uh, kelas saya ada kelas management information system. Satu problemnya itu, pertanyaannya sama. Itu in the United States, not in Indonesia. Jadi orang sebenarnya galau dengan adanya teknologi. Galaunya di mana? Ya kalau ada teknologi kan jumlah tenaga kerja bisa berkurang. Dampaknya unemployment. Uh, I remember I remember when I was the chief or head of computer laboratory several years ago in the faculty of economics we de we develop uh, an integrated system to manage the academic uh, academic data one important thing that uh, i mentioned at that time there will be no no layoff. Jadi saya meyakinkan dulu bahwa dengan teknologi baru tidak akan ada yang diberhentikan. Tapi ketika implementasi, saya harus menggunakan staff yang lain. Jadi ini, sorry, ini full in bahasa, I think, karena agak sulit. Jadi dulu kami mengembangkan namanya bukan si akad. Apa dulu sistem kita namanya? Masih ingat? Siska. Ya. Waktu itu kita memilih nama Siska karena Siska kan cantik ya. <laughs> ya nanti di dimarahi kacur saya. <laughs> Siska waktu itu terkenal istrinya Menteri Pak Sudomo. Tapi itu singkatan loh ya. Sistem Informasi Akademik Siska. Ya, cuman kalau orang Siska itu kan bayangannya, wah ini bagus. Jadi satu yang saya lakukan, karena sistem yang berjalan sebelumnya tidak bagus. Single user, single person only. Jadi kami mengganti dengan multi user, dengan multi pengguna. Satu, jaminan tidak ada layoff. Itu penting untuk karyawan supaya tenang. Bagaimana mengimplementasikan mereka kalau bekerja sehari-hari kan sudah padat pekerjaan. Tidak mungkin dengan sistem yang baru. Saya merekrut sekitar 20 siswi SMK untuk magang itu. Kita bayar dan seterusnya untuk melakukan entry data lima tahun ke belakang. Entry data akademik lima tahun ke belakang kemudian data barunya uh, juga terupdate. Kita konsinyer di satu ruangan dengan 20 terminal komputer, 10 atau 20, lupa saya, satu komputer dipegang dua orang. Satu yang baca, mulai dari nilai dan seterusnya itu, satunya yang entry. Kemudian, Uh, the next step after all the data already compiled adalah implementasi di lapangan. Kita training karyawan kita, di training untuk menggunakan itu. Wow, itu bekah bekuh itu. Tahu ya bekah bekuh, bekah bekuh itu susah itu. It's very not not easy. Kita training terus menerus, mulai kita biasakan simulasi. Lama-lama setelah bisa, wah mereka senang. 
pertama memang tidak ada layoff, yang kedua mereka pekerjaannya dimudahkan. Kalau listrik mati mereka bingung karena sistemnya sudah jalan bagus. Nah, uh, one important uh, indikator system is successful if the system is used. Kalau sistem sebagus apapun nggak digunakan itu indikator jelek. Itu digunakan, saya senang karena itu bisa ter, tercapai. Tidak ada layoff. Nah, sama problem yang kita hadapi sebenarnya sama. Cuman volumenya kalau universitas itu lebih lebih besar. But as a state university, uh, unless I mean we never apa itu? Melayoff lah. Jadi hampir tidak pernah memberhentikan karyawan kecuali dia memang ada masalah. Jadi jaminan itu penting. Uh, begini, kalau di universitas, we are uh, nirlaba ya, nirlaba salah satu kriterianya sehingga bukan mencari untung semata. Memang problemnya jadi kalau kuenya itu kecil dibagi banyak orang, akhirnya dapatnya lebih sedikit-sedikit. Jadi kita akan beda dengan mungkin organisasi yang yang lain. Uh, the other organization may think about profit, 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 university, it's not like that. Consequently, maybe uh, rate of salary and other things not as much as the other institution that thinking about profit. Kita menyeimbangkan antara uh, apa kebutuhan pegawai kita dengan jumlah yang besar. Nah, itu itu memang ada problem tersendiri. Tapi kita tetap menjaga so there's no layoff in the university. We uh, commit to do that. Itu Mas Mas Nur ya. Then from Mas Iqbal. Transformasi, the, the objective of the transformation actually to improve our service. To speed up the service. Jadi mesti harus lebih bagus. Ya Kalau misalnya pelayanan sebelumnya itu lama, maka ini harus lebih lebih cepat. That's a fundamental thing. Jadi bukan sekedar transformasi. Not 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 just thinking about transformation, but we have to serve better our stakeholders in term of speed, in term of uh, money maybe. Nah, uangnya jadi misalnya lebih murah, pekerjaannya lebih baik. And then the second question about how to get more money mungkin yang uh, not from UKT and IP itu pertanyaan yang sebenarnya pertanyaan yang selalu ditanyakan kepada perguruan tinggi PTNBH it's not about the transformation actually because we can show to you that first Uh, Brawijaya commit not to increase the tuition fee. Kita buktikan bahwa PTNBK bukan soal kenaikan UKT. Our social responsibility, we keep 20% with a very, very too small, small, not, not that soon. Golongan 1, 500 ribu SPP, golongan 2, 1 juta SPP. Do you think it makes sense? No. Tapi kita melakukan, karena itu kewajiban negara. That's our social responsibility. We keep that. Jadi transformasi ini tidak membawa dampak ke sana. Kalau ada orang yang bicara di luar itu, itu hanya karena memang pokoknya aku nggak suka. If you have a point of view like that, masih meskipun, even though I explain the whole day, 
in one week, in one year, you have the same point of view. Tetap pokoknya aku nggak mau. Kalau pokoknya, it's not, it's not, not quite good. We cannot discuss things. Jadi ada bapak ibu sebenarnya maaf nggak, yang memang pandangannya seperti itu. Aku nggak suka ini ya. Sudah aku nggak suka ya. Selesai urusannya. Saya riset saya tentang privatization of state owned enterprises. Saya lebih dalam mengkaji bagaimana transformasi itu. Ada yang saya nggak setuju ada. Ya, ada yang saya setuju. Kalau perbaikan kinerja, kecepatan pelayanan dan seterusnya itu sesuatu yang memang harus kita kita dukung. Jadi itu Mas Iba, Bapak Ibu yang lain, transformasi itu memang membawa dampak. Ya, dan tadi kalau ada yang anu itu kami tunjukkan bukti. Bukti yang lain apa? It's not not for postgraduate student loh ya. <laughs> But some of you, but not not many, in certain urgent case, we help. Tapi pertolongan yang utama adalah for our undergraduate student, diploma and sarjana. Mahasiswa tingkat akhir di Universitas Brawijaya, 50% UKT. Coba itu. Itu kami masih dicaci maki itu oleh mahasiswa-mahasiswa yang nggak selesai-selesai sekolahnya. 50 persen, Bapak-Ibu, itu saya punya angka kalau mau saya share, tapi nggak usah lah ya, karena waktunya sudah mau habis. And then for uh, that I mentioned about for the final year student, ya. Sekarang for new student and until seven semester, We also provide financial aid, financial support, depending on uh, the capacity of uh, their or he or she or their parent. Jadi prinsipnya gini, Bapak Ibu, kalau orang tuanya mampu ya jangan bilang tidak mampu. Yang tidak mampu kita bantu. In addition to the 20% that we already support. We also support student that we, uh, for example, kalau S1 itu ada 6 grade, ada yang diturunkan satu, ada yang ditunda, ada yang dikurangi, then the other dibebaskan. Tapi kalau yang mampu, jangan minta keringanan. Nanti kalau ada malaikat lewat, wah oh, jangan ngapus silam, ya. tapi kita bantu. UP has a philosophy like this. Tidak ada alasan, please translate in English, bro. Saya daripada sudah mau habis waktunya. Tidak ada alasan tidak bisa kuliah di Universitas Brawijaya kalau nggak punya biaya. Jadi selalu kita carikan jalan keluar. Itu, Mas. Baik waktu BLU maupun BTN, BH. Bagaimana ke depannya? Ya, ke depannya habis ini saya akan selesai. Nanti ya pimpinan yang baru yang mikir. Ya kan? Oke, okay. I think I think that's all. Thank you, Bu. Ya, yeah, terima kasih. Okay. Oh, thank you, Prof. Gugus. Oh, are there any other questions? Oh, yeah. Oke, okay. before we end this discussion, allow me to deliver the summaries of this presentation. Ya, yeah? that corporate governance is the art of directing and controlling, and the organization by balancing the needs of the various stakeholders. Corporate governance also means the, the process of disclosure and transparency. And then key aspects to ensure a good university governance is well implemented about leadership, organization structure, teamwork, discipline, and computer. Uh, okay. Thank you to our presenter for this session, Professor Gugus Irianto for the thoughtful presentation. Also, thank you to the participant for your kind attention. I'm returning this session to the Master of Ceremony. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Thank you very much for. Uh, Bu Mari. Actually, I missed one question ya, Pak Iqbal. Tak tambah sedikit ya. Uh, maaf Pak Pak Iqbal. I'm sorry about ini. Uh, unit bisnis tadi pertanyaannya. Ya. Yeah. We have several uh, business unit in in Brawijaya University. I used to be a director of one. Ya, yeah, many. Uh, to some extent still growing. But if you can learn from ITB from University of Indonesia to from Gajah University, uh, business unit in university always still growing. Not much but uh, promising. We expect like we expect a good one from the uh, hospital, for example. Actually, it's quite good, but patent is also very important. Yeah, but still growing. I cannot uh, say that it helped a lot, but uh, still growing. Hopefully, uh, in the future, uh, the business is quite good and will help the university to uh, get much more fun from that kind of activity. Uh, secondly, we hope that through the cooperation, cooperation university with others usually can get uh, uh, another source of funding except i mean in addition to tuition fee and and other kita aja pak terima kasih thank you very much yeah. okay thank you very much uh for the for the additions prof gugus and also uh for associate prof korean and yani psd uh, actually, it gave us a lot of understanding today, the importance of uh, governance and especially in the institutions and especially also in a university. Uh, one thing that we can highlight that actually a specific organizations needs a specific principle to manage the governance. And also, uh, if we want to run it, we need to be more disciplined. Okay. Uh, and then we come to the finals. Uh, maybe we can give a hand one more. And we like to invite uh, Dr. Yene Prihatining Tias, S A M S A D B A A K. Please come to the stage and hand over a certificate for the keynote speaker. Okay, uh, thank you very much for Prof. Gugus and then um, the certificate for uh, Associate Professor uh, Ibu Burian. Uh, the certificate is still on progress, I'm sorry. Maybe we can hand it over and the back. Maybe we have a photo sessions together for... Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, we would we would like to say thank you for the uh, keynote speaker and the moderator for our first sessions. Uh, now we are going for the next session. This is about the sustainability practitioners, and also uh, we are going to talk about the sustainability and a professional associations that live like a promise a promote best practice of sustainability research and reporting that aim to create momentum and meet the needs of the present without compromising the interest of the same in the future professor Matthews is now in the back yeah.
Okay, thank you very much. I've got a uh, whisper from the Prof Echo that actually Prof Matthew already here. So um, I think this is match with uh, what we are going to discuss tonight. Maybe uh, the comedy, would you please uh, pin out Prof Matthew? Okay, while waiting for uh, Prof Matthew, uh, today we will uh, discuss for the uh, second uh, agenda. This is about accounting and SDGs. So um, in this context, I want to invite the respectable cannot speaker and the moderators to deliver the topic. To prove Matthew Sameni PSD, he is a professor of management practice in accounting Ghana, the executive director of CBS Africa, and for this session will be led by Mrs. Mirna Amiria PSD. She is an active lecturer in accounting department and also a consultant in public accounting. So please, uh, thank you for being here with us. To Mrs. Mirna, please may come to the stage. She's, she's already on the stage. Thank you, Prof. Gugus, for coming and join with us. And uh, for the comedy, would you please be now it's for um, Prof. Matthew. All right, so uh, while waiting for uh, Prof. Matthew, how are you, Miss Mirna? I'm fine, thanks. Yes. Miss Atau Ibu Kartika. Uh, you can call me Miss, this is fine. <laughs> yes, uh, because I don't know if she uh, is you. <laughs> yeah. It has I been a year. <laughs> yes, it did. It has been a year we didn't see one to another. Yes, right. Yeah, so this is see you, see you, see you. <laughs> so this is an honor to see you again here. Um Miss Mirna, would you please uh tell us a bit about uh what is your educational background uh to us? So maybe it can increase our um spirits to finish our doctoral degree. Would you please? Yes, maybe I need uh maybe uh Oh, what is it? A uh, few time to introduce about the briefly uh, the curriculum vitae of from Professor Matthew Samanyi. Can the committee help? Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, thank you, uh, Ibu Kartika. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, please let me introduce briefly the curriculum vitae of our second keynote speaker, Professor Matthew Samanyi. Currently, Professor Matthew Samanyi is a professor of management practice in accounting at CEABS and also the executive director CEABS Africa. He was also as a professor of accounting at the Birmingham Business School, University of Birmingham, also taught at the University of Sheffield, UK, and the City University of Hong Kong. Professor Matthew has extensive research and consulting experience in sustainability, financial analysis, and performance management. He got the PhD in 1997 from University of Wolverhampton in collaboration with University of Manchester, UK. And his research interests are in management accounting, accounting in emerging economies, and interface between management accounting and corporate governance. Next. Professor Matthew Semeny will present the material with the theme accounting and SDGs. We have time for around 25 minutes, maximum until 11.15 a.m., including question and answer session. Prof. Matthew, please, time is yours. Okay. 
Thank you. Can I share my screen? Okay, once you stop sharing. Okay, yes. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, let me just make sure this. Is, sorry, let me just make sure. Yes. Please welcome, Miss. Can, can, welcome can you see my screen? Me. Yes. Oh, the camera is off. Okay, hold on. Okay, just one second. Right. Can can you see me now? Uh, you can. Prof. Matthew, can yes. you can you your voice high volume? Can you? Oh, okay. Let up. me. See. Yes, speak up. Maybe you can yeah. set uh, to. Uh, can Can you hear me? Volume. Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, may I interrupt? Hello, Professor Matthew? Yes, How I can you? hear you. Yes, okay. Let me just use uh, the Your voice is uh, very soft. Would you like to speak up? Or maybe uh, we cannot hear clearly. Are you hearing my voice? I can, yeah, I can okay, hear. Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah. No? Okay, yes. Uh, it's okay. I, it's I would okay. like to ask. Oh, you can hear me technician, now. The technician. Bisa di kerasin, mas. Okay. Suaranya dia pelan. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, and I would like to say thank you for joining us, uh, Professor Matthew. I know you are now is very earlier uh, in Ghana, right? Yeah, uh, it's it, what, what time in Ghana right now? Four it's three, three, no, 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 3.40, 3.40 a.m. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Early morning. <laughs> Early oh, 3 morning. 3.40, 3.40. Oh, 3.40, yeah. 3.40 in the morning, okay. Yes. Yeah, 3.3. Three, three. Yeah, 3, yes. Yeah, 3.40. Three okay, but can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, Prof. Matthew, please yes, uh, wait. Yes, for a while. Hi, yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but it's very... Uh, I'm surprised. Yes, not because my voice, volume, I'm my not, volume yes, is... No voice. Uh, my volume is very high too, so I'm not sure what what the problem is. Let me just see. I'm not sure what the problem because my volume is very high. Okay. Every okay, uh, Prof. Matthew. Now it's better about the voice. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can start. You can start your okay. let me, presentation. Let me share material. my screen. Yeah, let me just share. I'm coming then. Let me just, I'm coming. Let me go back and. Yeah, give me one moment. Let me just. Okay, can you can you see my screen now? Yes, clear. Okay, okay clear. right, right, okay. right. Okay, so Professor Ganis and then the entire team, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure. Even though I haven't been to Indonesia in person, it's always a pleasure actually interacting with the, the doctoral student and the entire team of, um, of your university. Wow. I'm really happy to be part of this conversation. I know it's very early. Okay. Yeah, I know it's very early. Here. Oh, I, I can hear some echo. I'm not sure that is from me. Okay. 
Right. So I'm here to talk about accounting and the nice. SDGs, nice. which are basically the sustainable development goals. And my area of research, it's a bit more social, even though from accounting, but I tend to look at some of the, the social issues of accounting. So the and the sustainability and circular economy. So the sustainable development goals are very important to my research area. And as well as what I think is important to society. So this is just a brief history that the 2015 the sustainable development goals were set up by the UN. And the whole idea is to help eradicate poverty and hunger. So we have it, we had a target of 2030. So effectively, we have just eight years from now uh, to be able to do that. But the focus is actually on social and economic development. And so how do we actually as accountants contribute um, to social and economic development? Accounting is not, not just about numbers, but how do we bring that in? So in terms of the goals itself, there are 17 goals, has 169 targets. Of course, not all of them are relevant to accounting. So this, I've just brought in this indicators to show you the 17 goals from poverty, zero hunger, good health, quality of education, gender, and then up to the last one, which is actually about partnership. As I said, not all the goals are directly relevant to accounting. And then the question is that which ones? So if you look at the International Federation of Accountants, in their 2016 report, they actually identify eight out of the 17 goals that have some relevance to accounting, that has some direct relations with accounting. And so we accountants need to actually understand that. I'm not going to go through all the, the SDGs, but for example, if you take SDG eight, it is actually about developing human capital. And I, uh, I, IFAC has identified that goal 8.3 actually talks about how the accounting profession globally can be harmonized. And so it actually talks about skills development and so how do you develop even accounting curriculum and how do you standardize accounting across the world then goes 17 is our partnership. And I do a lot of work around partnership. Some of my earlier research actually revolved around strategic alliances and joint ventures. Now I'm quite interested in how big organizations actually partner with smaller organizations or startups. And so go 17 talks about partnership. And accounting is actually important in, in terms of data collection, monitoring, all the accountability, and how do we actually support the sustainable development goals. So those are key, very key. And as I said, it's a change. There has to be a change in focus from organizations to just being in a very narrow-minded silo and to systems and integrated thinking. So it needs rethinking of even the accounting profession because usually accountants are seen as being boxed or like you are in a particular functional area, you are an accountant. But what the SDGs are teaching us is that we need broad-based accountants. Accountants who understand issues around let's say partnership creations around poverty reduction. So we need more, much more broad-based accountants. So this even goes back to how the accounting curriculum is developed. We need a lot of critical thinking and other things within the development. Okay, so the key thing from our side as accountant is that we need, as I said, accountants who are broad-minded. That's why I said they require 
innovation and interdisciplinary thinking whereby you look at partnerships between government, industry, private sector. And as I've identified here, even if this is where accountants come in. And then it's also emphasis on global collaboration and private partnerships. And so the point is that to achieve the SDGs, we all need to come together. And accounting has to be part of that conversation in terms of the design of our systems and then the measurement and all those things. I'll come to that in a minute. And so for, it needs a mindset, a change in our mindsets. And that change will have to come in when we link business back to sustainability. And I said, what do you mean by sustainability? It's, he said, doing the right thing for employees, consumers, sorry, consumers, society, the earth and the government. So doing the right thing, not only for shareholders, okay? So here, even though the focus is on shareholders, we want to create shareholder value, but we're also talking about social value. How then do we actually contribute to social value? And I've raised this issue because people, a lot of companies sometimes believe that if you want to maximize social value, you cannot also maximize shareholder value. So that's why I've actually said, okay, even though the focus of corporations is profit, how do we actually create this profit to benefit society? This is why accountants come in. And so the key question is that, Profit is not a trade-off with social value, but rather we should see it as synergy because some people think, oh, once you want to do more to society, you have to reduce your profit or you will reduce your profit. And what I'm saying here, and what the, the other side of the literature is that, no, that should not be the case, but rather there should be a synergy between shareholder value, creating or making profit, and then doing good for the environment. And this leads to, and so these are typical research questions that we accountants should even ask. Responsibility of corporations. I mean, I go to organizations, I wanted to find out what their vision, object goals are. The traditional view that we all know is, which is Anglo-Saxon, shareholder wealth maximization, where we look at the total shareholder return, market value added, how do we create value for the shareholder? But with the SDGs, there is now a lot of focus on the alternative social view, so which is about society. So this is why I raise the whole argument that is it a trade-off or a synergy? So this is just explaining what I've said earlier on. And so for us as one accountant and researchers, we have to be able to ask critical questions in terms of what value are we creating? Are we focusing just narrowly on shareholders or basically on creating social value? And I've brought two examples here to explain that, that there is a link, interlink between shareholder value and doing good for society, which is what the SDGs are focusing on. This is a, just an example from Brazil and, and Bolivia. So because of the protection of the Amazon, now, which is an environmental issue, which is an SDG issue, companies, that are in operating in those environments or have their supply chain or value chain connected to that environment have been forced to actually look at the protection of the environment, protection of the Amazon. So investors are now actually linking their investments to how these companies or corporations respond to the environment. So as I said, 
and this is not like a billion dollars. This is $6.2 trillion investment. So the whole thing for corporations now and accountants is that if we don't take the SDGs in part seriously, if we don't take the environment, society seriously, this will actually have a negative effect on the organization. And so the fact that we want to make profit doesn't mean we should not pay attention to the environment. And this is also another example here that the, the, in the US, the VF Corporation, which is the, the footwear, shoes, and other things, and they own the brand Timberland. They've actually stopped buying Brazilian leather because there's pressure that the environment is being destroyed and everything. And so the point I'm trying to make here is that there is a direct relationship between profit and doing good for the environment. Companies, corporations that are not seen as doing good or achieving the SDGs will be punished by either the financial markets, the, the society, consumers, and other things. So that's why it's important for us. So in effect, from for us as accountants, we say that the SDGs, or the Sustainable Development Goals, are actually changing the perception from shareholders to stakeholders. So this is actually a very important thing for us also as research, researchers. We want to take a much broader view. And also, how do we actually communicate Okay, sustainability, our stories, our successes, what we are doing. And it's important because accounting has always been seen as, oh, we focus on a short term. It's about return on investment. It's about um, shareholder value, short term financial results. But we have to basically move now to the long term and actually value creation. So commitment to sustainability, as I said, is our partnership, relationship, consumers, investors, government. And then also I brought something here called responsible business. And so this is where we talk about child labor, exploitation and everything. Accounting has to be part of that conversation. So it's important. So accountants, have to approach the SDG in what I said, spirit of determination to help drive opportunity, prosperity, and trust and create a sustainable future. So in effect, this conversation about SDGs, accountants have to be part of it because we want to be a part of that story, that journey. And in, in even our research, we have to be able to look at impact. I always say that if you are doing research and your question is not about impact, then you are not actually doing the right research. How do we as accountants encourage businesses to meet our SDGs? Ethical behavior in our value chain, supply chain. So in ethics is now becoming very important especially if you want to operate internationally. Uh, how do we as accountants contribute to that? Best practice, this is why corporate governance, stewardship, accountability comes in. Then the goal 17 of SDG, of course, is our partnership, strategic partnerships. And what I've also, as a research interest, if you can look at partnership between, let's say, the big corporations and then the startups, the small organizations. Okay, so for research, the number of things that we actually need when we are designing our research is actually financial reporting. Reporting has to change from just our income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement to integrated reporting. So, from a research perspective, this is something we need to look at. Integrated reporting allows you to look, at, apart from your financial, look at human, social, intellectual, natural resource, everything. So we have to do that. 
And then the accountant as a research question, when you go into organizations, you have to look at the, the changing role of accountant. What information do accountants provide to management to achieve the SDGs, both financial and non-financial? Then even to look at organizations in terms of how they manage their resources, financial, but then it's also about other non-financial logistics, knowledge-based intangible human resource, social relations, renewable energy. So we have to look at that. Then we look at the performance. How do we design innovative ways of measuring and monitoring performance? This all have to change. So you have to change from our traditional return on investment or return on capital employed, our financial base to a much more broad base. And this is actually brings us to what we call the shared value. And this is how we should be looking at performance. So even though we have the financial here, which is how we do well to satisfy shareholders, we make money to sustain, but also we need to broaden it to how do we solve social issues? How are we solving environmental problems? And the two are actually interrelated. So that's why the circles are actually linked. And so this is actually the shared value. In other words, they said value for many. How do we share our value rather than the value going to shareholders? So this is actually a responsibility for us as researchers and especially accounting researchers. So just to get to the end of my this uh, presentation, and it's our responsibility, all of us here, to first start from personal understanding of the SDGs. You have to read about the SDGs, understand it. Then you start a conversation in your organizations, all the people you interact with, then have, encourage them to build the SDGs into the strategy and their business model. And measures, and embed capability across the organization. So with that, as I said, we need to empower people. We need to train people. We need to actually have that conversation for them to do it. Then our, it's about the ecosystem. It's our partnership, our supply chain partners, people across the value chain. How do we engage them? Then of course they're reporting. And this is where integrated reporting comes in. Uh, so we change the financial reporting now to integrated reporting. And it's about learning and relearning and then the feedback. And we call it a feedback loop. So it's not a one-off thing. We have to go around and learn and relearn. And just to conclude my talk, I think the point I want to make is that the world is changing. There is pressure on we, the current generation, to create a future that will last for the future generation. And accounting has a role to play in that. How can we get accounting profession? We have the people, we have the skill set. So how do we get the accounting profession? And so we can provide our leadership to set up standards, okay? Uh, accounting standards. So the standard setting board to consider SDGs into their standards, and then we provide that leadership. So we actually say, and this is a group, we need to have a global solution, discipline and rigor to ESG, which is the Environment, Social and Governance Reporting, which links back to the SDGs. How do we actually improve the quality and comparability of ESG uh, reports? And then how do we then balance the cost and benefits? So this is what I wanted to share with you uh, this morning to then say that, look, I say as accountants and then as a PhD wow. researchers or professors or students, we all have a responsibility and our research should not be just the narrow focus stock market research without even considering the impact on society. So we need to build at the SDGs 
and SDG is basically about how do we contribute to poverty reduction, reduction of anger, and how do we build this actually into our research. So thank you very much. And I know you're having a wonderful uh, conference, uh, but I, hopefully I'll have opportunity to come to Indonesia in person uh, very soon. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Please give applause for Prof. Matthew. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please, your, please raise your hand, but uh, because the time is very limited. One question, okay. From who you can start your question? Uh, from um, from 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 I wonder uh, in what stage is GD in Ghana right now? Thank you. Okay, let, let me, can, you, can you repeat that question? I understood part of it, but it was, the line was breaking. Okay. I wonder in what stage is GD yes. in Ghana right now? Thank you. Let me see. I think it's a network. Can, can you type the question in the chat for me? Let me see, uh, please. Okay, okay. Uh, use a chat and uh, just type the question. Let me just, maybe that will be better. Yes. A question, maybe uh, she, she, she question is uh, in Ghana, in your country now, on yes. what stage? Uh, what stage in Ghana? Yes, on what stage in okay. SDGs? Yes, maybe you can explore your um, information. Thank you. Okay, 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 I understand. No, I think the problem we have, especially in Africa, and a lot of developing countries have that problem is that we, we are far behind the SDGs because to achieve the SDGs, it needs a mind shift. And we, have, we are really struggling. So in my country and across Africa, a lot of companies are not really moving well with the SDGs because every company there is pressure to meet financial targets. It's not about, it, they, they can't see the link with poverty reduction, but I think it's up to we, the researchers, to actually engage in that conversation. So for example, what I'm doing now in my university is that I've actually set up a center for business, innovation and sustainability. And the whole idea is every month I'll bring companies and politicians and the leaders to have this conversation. So we are still far behind achieving the targets of SDGs in Ghana and across Africa. Um, and I think we need to do something. But the problem is that we can't wait for the developed countries to achieve it for us. We as developing countries have to actually do that. So this will be uh, my response to your question, but thank you very much. And I hope I've answered it. Okay, thank you, Prof. Matthew, for your response. How, Miss, yeah? okay. Okay, uh, is any question again? One person maybe? Okay, um, yes. Oh. It's okay, uh, to, to, to okay. Thank you for the comments. Um, this is my media PSD. Um, Prof. Manchuk, um, could you hear my voice clearly? Uh, I, it's breaking. So I could, I, I know you're talking, but um, I'm not sure that you can, maybe you can type the question in the chat as well. Then I will be able to read. If I, if I don't hear you clearly. Thank you. Um, 
Firstly, uh, my name is Putu Pramana Bandari, and I would ask you about the books on the research and observation, how significant it is to do reporting for companies, especially for the investor point of view in Bandar, because particularly in Indonesia, the financial mm. performance is to become the main reason for them to invest. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Uh, what okay. Is it clear? Okay. So the, the, the question you're asking is how important is SDG reporting for corporations? But, but that's a question. Yes, how the significance yes. Yes, reporting okay. in Okay, I, I, absolutely. So it's so still the uh, so currently, for example, in Ghana and across Africa, because I do a lot of work across Africa. The even though we are all talking about SDGs. It's still companies still have the narrow-minded financial reporting. So for now, it's actually lagging behind the SDG reporting, but it's changing. It's changing because if you want to go to the international financial market, there is now pressure on companies to report their SDG initiative. So this is where integrated reporting is coming. So we're still lagging behind, especially locally. But then once companies are now looking into the international financial market, there is now pressure on them. So for example, I just finished a project with a, a company from Nigeria that is trying to raise money from the IFC. And the IFC has actually tied the uh, finance directly to the environment. So it's about the SDGs. So we have to present a very long report on the company's initiatives, carbon, the, the carbon reduction, child labor, and a lot of things. So this is changing and a lot of companies are now being forced. So, but I can still see that maybe in the next 10 years, a lot of companies will make that step to move from move from the traditional financial reporting into the integrated reporting. Yeah. Does that answer answer your question? Okay, thank you, Prof. Matthew. Right okay. is uh the popular. Okay. Um, we have uh just until three minutes, maybe the last question. One person, I see. Okay, okay, Miss, you can start your question. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, Mr. Matthew. Good morning. I uh, would like I uh, introduce myself. My name is El Ratina uh, okay. PhD program at uh, University of Ramjaya. Okay. Uh, on your slide, uh, I see your first uh, other content to uh, sustainability. Mm. Uh, there are five tasks uh, I see. Um, uh, I will focus on the last task. Uh, I think the definition of strategic uh, partnership. Uh, my question uh, is uh, what must do? What we must do to drive the uh, definition of uh, strategic partnership? Uh, would you like to give me some? Example, maybe. Mm. But uh, in my thinking, uh, the strategy is uh, the multi-million scope, multi scope of the especially in Ghana. OK, let me make sure I understand the question. There, there was a break in the line. So I'm not sure whether you, you, you said strategy. Are you asking? Um, if you can clarify, do you want a, the strategy for sustainability? Or I think I didn't get it. 
It is a line. The line is not a bit clear. It keeps breaking. So can you clarify again? Is it a strategy? Or... Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, so I'm just the, the last question. So I'm not sure whether um, the question is about strategy. Yes, the last question, maybe uh, it highlights that what we must do to drive okay. strategic, uh, what is it? Strategic okay. For example, uh, okay. Having my, having uh, the strategic of partnership. Uh, you like uh, the best task for content uh, management scope. Right? Hmm. Okay, I, I'm not sure that I understand the question well, but I'll, I'll try and answer the way I understand it because of the network. Uh, but I'm I'm thinking you were asking about what must we do as let's say maybe organizations or to have maybe to drive sustainability that that's the way i'm understanding it now if that's the question i think this is actually number one it has to start first with a conversation that's why i said for me the strategy is that this is not a solution by one person it has to start from integrating sustainability into the decision-making process into the strategy formulation, into the decision-making process. The conversation has to be about the SDGs. And so it's different from, let's say CSR or corporate social reporting where we wait until the end of the year, we just do something then we report, but this one it has to be integrated. So I think strategically the conversation has to change. We need to actually involve everybody in the organization and then companies must be willing to commit we need investment because it's our innovation if you're going to let's say contribute to climate change the environment you need to innovate so you need to be able to put money if you're going to actually create decent work and economic growth you need to innovate so for me it's about having a total conversation innovation, empowerment, everything. So I'm not sure whether I've answered the question, but because of the network, that's the way I understood the question about what must we do. So I think what must we do is about strategy, uh, how do we embed sustainability and the SDGs into our strategy formulation? And it has to be an integrated approach. And, and that is the way I will probably answer that question. I hope I've answered your question. If I haven't, maybe drop me an email or something. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, Brad, um, Matthew. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, time is finished. And please give applause once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Matthew Samani, for your valuable information. Thank you also for all participants. And that's all uh, the event of this day. Thank you. And, and I give back to Ibu Kartika. Thank you. But I, I can leave now. Yeah, okay. Oh, Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, we can leave Thank you so much. Before? Yes, before we go? All right. All right. Um, thank you very much for your time. So many And also, um, since I'm um, um, so um, I told you this young of the sessions. Uh, I assume that from the fields are in the room for a moment. He's still with us. All right. Okay. Um. So um. For the uh, committee, want to uh, um call him once again? Not yet. Okay. Um. I think we are.
coming on the uh, next agenda. Um, after this, for all of the participants, uh, we will have a coffee break and also a Friday prayer. And uh, for the participants who already registered by uh, coming online, but uh, everyone is coming offline, so please uh, do registrations by card in the front. And also uh, for who already paid and uh, registrations, please please go to four by stairs. Second one in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, untuk Bapak Ibu yang datang kembali uh, awal registrasi online, uh, namun datang offline nanti bisa ke registrasi meja registrasi. Dan untuk Bapak Ibu yang sudah selesai untuk pembayaran dan registrasi offline bisa, lang bisa langsung ke lantai empat dengan tangga. Dan uh, saya ucapkan terima kasih. Kita akan kembali ke sini jam jam um, 13, maaf, jam 14.30, di mana jam 1 sampai jam setengah akan ada paper presentation based on the room that already announced by the uh, companies. So thank you very much and see you soon after this. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. mana <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 
Kan belum ada duduk tadi. Terus saya mau buat Ini jangan berat sih. Anja. Ya. Oh, enggak usah ngobrol dulu, kita lihat dulu. Makanya sendiri. Bagaya seolah-olah ngomong kemarin. Kayak-kayak yang ngomong.
Tidak terdengar itu. Ya ini saya mau join caranya gimana? Bentar. Sudah join cuma belum masuk ke break room. Mohon saya dimasukin ke room 5, Pak. Mohon izin, Pak, saya dimasukin ke room 5, Pak.
<tuh> Selamat sore, apa saya bisa gabung dengan breakout room 5?
to introduce for our for our next speaker. Uh, okay. Um, hello, uh, Associate Prof. Tariq. Hello, hi. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam yeah. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Tariq, for the time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. How are you? Okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude for being with you here in this such a great uh, colloquium, International Doctoral Colloquium. Uh, special thanks to uh, Professor uh, Eko Ganes uh, Soko Harsino. Special thanks for all. A special thanks for all the organizer and participants in such a great and estimable conference. Uh, I would like to express uh, my uh, gratitude for everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Associate Professor Dr. Tarek. I want to tell you something about myself. Uh, I uh, got my PhD from uh, University of Science Malaysia in 2015 in accounting, PhD in accounting in corporate governance. Yeah. And uh, actually from 2016 until the pandemic time, I could uh, participate in a 26th international conference in Europe and the United States, including Harvard University, Oxford University, uh, Rome University and Texas University. Okay. And uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thanks. It's really interesting one. Um, well, actually, uh, we are from uh, Universitas Pravijaya. Say hi to you. And we would like to say thank you for attendance in our uh, event. And uh, before we start that, uh, Associate Prof. Tarek, let me introduce also for our moderator today. So uh, he will lead for today's discussions. Uh, actually, our um, moderator today um, is Dr. Candidate Otto Puti Harjo, uh, huh? SASH, MMAK, ICPA, BKP, CA, CPMA, CS, CSRS, and CSRA. Um, his, his, actually, his competence is on tax stations, and he has the highest level of the tax professional, we call it as a private C, and also he has in CPA and also CPMA. And he has the attorney license also here, Pak pa Otto. So, uh, Pak Otto, are you ready for today's event? Oh, more than ready is very good. Okay. So, That's let's great. welcome the Associate Prof. Tariq and also Mr. Otto. Time is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So for uh, today, uh, I would like to share you. Uh, wait, sorry. Ah, sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, I will moderate. Because, uh, I will I'm sorry, because the voice went. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Moderate the discussion. I will moderate the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry, okay. sorry. Yes, thank no, you. No problem. Uh, then uh, I would like to introduce you first. But thank actually, you very much. You steal my show already. <laughs> but yeah, Thanks just yeah, it's joking. So uh, to all of attendance and committees, may I have your attention, please? May I have your attention? Because we have also the offline attendances, uh, Professor. So that's why we need to, let's say, let them becoming more quieter or something, yeah? <clears throat> Thank you so very much. Okay. Then we uh, have some time. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Let's run the because now we're breaking up into some sections for presentations of the colloquium. Uh, so then uh, they will involve in our meeting later on. No problem. But um, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Tariq Taufik Yusuf uh, Al Abdullah. But first of all, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to uh, Professor Tariq Taufik Yusuf Al Abdullah because we have four times time the different times right 
for hours different time. So it should be, I think, around uh, 12, 11 o'clock over there, correct? Yes, right now is 11 okay. in my country. Yeah. Okay. So, and good afternoon to all of the committees and attendants. Now we are moving to the next, actually the third sessions. So the next keynote speech will be delivered by respectable associate professor, Dr. Tariq Taufik Yusuf Al-Abdullah. And uh, he is the professor or PhD in accounting from University Science Malaysia in 2015. And also Mr. Tariq Taufik uh, Yusuf Abdullah holds uh, sorry, um, lecturer at accounting sections in the College of Administrations and Economic University of Basrah, Basrah, Iraq. Okay, he is one of the members of the editorial board and regular reviewer of the international business research, and also uh, in the same positions of International Journal of Business and Management and then also the ASEAN Journal of Social Science Studies in Singapore. And as well, he is the member of Corporate Governance Expert from 2017. Okay. Professor, we have 40 minutes durations. Uh, and then I would like to break them down into two sections. The speech of your speech, 25 minutes, and then another 15 minutes for discussions. Yeah. Um, we'll have question and answer from attendances. And uh, also in the on this speech, Mr. Taufik will presenting a management accounting, which is very relevant to his field background in a firm performance. All right. Not take too long. Please welcome respectable associate, Professor Derek, uh, Dr. Tariq Taufik Yusuf Abdullah. Professor, please, and Tafadal. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. So with this nice events, this nice international uh, doctoral colloquium, actually, uh, Yes, I want to. Sorry. Actually, today uh, I would like to share you my papers. Uh, uh, about the new perspective, okay, on the internal control mechanisms and company performance link, a study to enhance growth of company. Introduction. Globally, the awareness to the control mechanisms and their impact on the company's growth has developed rapidly, and this has led to the adoption of such mechanisms, which leads to the benefits of the stockholders and other parties in the stakeholders. Company's uh, growth, actually it's one of the indicators of the company's performance, and it has increasingly become a very important issue by scholars and researchers due to its positive effect on enhancing the economy by solving several problems and by solving its social economic problems and eliminating unemployment. Problem statements. Actually, the context of the, of the current study is Jordan. Jordan, one of the uh, countries in Asia, and actually, I, I could uh, give more explanation about Jordan in my paper. But as you know, we have limited time here. So I'm not going to talk about Jordan and its details. 
So the context of the current study, the Jordanian, we talk about the, the problem. What's the problem in this, in this study? Declining in the performance in the last seven years in Jordan. The context of the economy, several problems, as I mentioned, the uh, economic problems in Jordanian economy has been declining. And that will be uh, mentioned by several studies in the literature review, and also mentioned by the World Economic Forum between 2015-2021. Uh, due to the, the poor performance on the non-financial sectors, and the companies belong to this sector, as mentioned by one of my uh, one of my uh, studies, one of my papers I could publish in Under Science Publisher, and it's uh, in 2022. And uh, I mentioned about the problem in the Jordanian context about the declining in the performance. Also, we could find the problems uh, very clear mentioned by the Amman Stock Exchange. Furthermore, another economic problem in Jordanian economy is that Jordanian economy has suffered from high rate of employment, unemployment, because recently Jordan has received a huge number of migrants who were displaced in, to Jordan. Research objectives. So to investigate the objective of the current study is to investigate the relationship between the three independent variables. They are both size, both diversity, and independent managers in the board of director. And the dependent variable will be the company's growth using market share. The significance of the study, the, uh, actually in my study, I could have a good contribution that I could fill the gap with the respect to what has been done in the previous literature throughout choosing the variables of the study in the Jordanian context to be investigated in industrial sector. Actually, the non-financial sector, I choose the non-financial sector and uh, it includes the industrial and service sectors, okay? So I choose the industrial sector in the current study. The current study, uh, it is important because it may help policymakers and, and uh, the managers in developing, in both developing uh, countries and developed countries, and particular in Jordan, which is the context of the current uh, study. Literature review, hypothesis, development, and model of the study. Regarding the independent variables of the current study, we could see in the literature review, they mentioned that there is a positive relationship between them and performance, and other studies mentioned about the negative relationship between them and the performance. So, we 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 want to talk about the the our uh, our independent variables in my study. So we talk about the board size and performance. We could see that the hypothesis that I put in my study there is a negative relationship between board size and uh, a company's performance represented by market share, and for the diversity there is a positive relationship between this variable and company performance. And for the third independent variable, which is ind independent managers in the board of director has a positive relationship with the company performance. Here we could see the model of the study, here the uh, market share, the dependent variable, and we could see here the board size, diversity, independent uh, managers, 
and for the uh, for the control variable, the size of the companies. Actually, we need to avoid uh, the size because the size is not equal between the uh, companies. So we choose it. I choose it to be as a control variable. Methodology. The uh, data analysis, uh, the description analysis, such as frequencies, I test the frequencies, means the standard deviation. And also, you can see here the correlation test to test the correlation between the independent variables in order to determine there is a, a, a multicollinearity problem or there is no multicollinearity problem between the independent variables of the current study. Also, here you can see the regression analysis to see the uh, which significant relationship between uh, independent variables and dependent variables. So approach use is a quantitative method. And uh, I tested the hypothesis of the current study for the data collection, uh, I collected the data for the uh, 2021 for 60 industrial companies. And uh, actually I didn't put in my consideration the financial companies because they have their own law. So I excluded them from the sample of the, my study. I got the uh, data from the annual reports uh, from the Amman Stock Exchange in 2021. Results and discussions. Actually, I, uh, I, uh, you can see here the uh, variables and the indicators about the mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, uh, skewness and uh, cortices. And uh, you could see here that the uh, is a good indicator because the uh, cortices is between the uh, minus plus three and for the skewness between minus plus 1.9. And for the correlation analysis also, I tested the correlation between the independent variables And you can see here for the regression analysis, here we have the independent uh, var variables. You can see here the tolerance and uh, VIF. Actually, uh, uh, we could uh, recognize if there is a multi uh, colonality problem. Once we uh, take a look about the VIF, it should be less than 10. And for the tolerance uh, value should be more than 0 0.1. Uh, as mentioned by uh, here 2010. Also another indicator, once we take a look about the correlation test, it shouldn't be more than 80%. Once there is 80% uh, and more, here we could, we could uh, say, uh, say there is a, a problem, multi problem. But for the sample of the uh, current study, there is no multi problem. For the ANOVA, uh, I tested the ANOVA, the whole uh, model is significant. And here also we can see the R square is acceptable. It shows how the independent variable explain the dependent variable of the current study. After I run the regression analysis uh, via SPSS, the was run between all the uh, variables that have been chosen of the current study, represent, represented by the independent variables and dependent variables of the market share. The output shows that the board size has a negative relationship with the market share, as you can see here for minus uh, 3.6. And also for the diversity, there is a positive relationship between this variable and market share. 
also for the independent managers, there is a positive relationship. So the uh, T value shows 1.9. So all the uh, variables are significant in the current study and their relationship with the fan performance. Here, as you can see the table for the board size, negative relationship. So once the board has more member, this will affect negatively on the fan performance. The diversity, when the, there is a diversity in the board of director, a good, it gives good uh, indicator and good impression because there is a positive uh, relationship with the firm performance. And for the independent variable also, once there is independent managers in the board of director, it will have positive impact on the performance. As you can see here, 1.9 for the T uh, value. I use also uh, 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 e-views technique because I wanted to know uh, about the heteroskedasticity problem. Actually, uh, the model is free from heteroskedasticity and the model is, uh, uh, is not uh, heteroskedastic. The model or the di uh, diagnostic actually. Also, uh, I, uh, I uh, analyze the data and variables of the current study. We are using PLS and the results of the PLS is similar to the results of SPSS. Conclusion. Recently, the business world has faced several failures in the Aaron and Arthur Anderson and also for recent all the countries in developed and developing countries. So such failures and others have led to shock for both developing and developed countries, giving consequently great attention to different parties to deal with cooperation, which control mechanisms. Actually, I use in my paper uh, internal or control mechanisms to represent uh, corporate governance because corporate governance has many mechanisms, several mechanisms and uh, principles. So such, such mechanisms <laughs> focusing <laughs> at, <laughs> Several studies in the literature review have dealt with the relationship between control mechanisms and companies' performance. Nevertheless, there have been not enough number of studies that take in their account the investigation of such relationship through using new ideas in accounting and management from a new trend to enhance growth of companies in uh, emerging markets. Because they use to use, for example, ROA, ROE, Tobin's Q, and so on. So the findings suggest that there is a positive link between board diversity and company's performance with its indicator market share, the dependent variable. In addition, there was a, a strong relationship between independent managers and company's performance with its indicator market share. And the same for the importance for the, it shows that the small board is better than the once there is a negative relationship, that means this. once the board of directors is small, this will affect positively on the uh, uh, company's performance. So the current research recommended the uh, future researchers to test such variables with service companies, because here I'm testing the industrial companies. Uh, so uh, I advise and recommended the future research to uh, make it the same tested on service companies listed in a money stock exchange, such as service companies, in addition to investigate it in a companies belonging to one of the developed or developing countries as well. Thank you very much. I try to be very fast, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of things, but because we have limited time, I couldn't uh, say.
Thank you so much. If there is any question, I'm uh, here ready to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Taufik Yusuf Al Abdullah. Uh, it's only 17 minutes. You have 25 minutes actually, but should not be a problem. Then I will uh, give a chance to the audiences to um, to we in, enter into a question and answer sessions. So then I will let uh, the audience to. Uh, raise your hand if, if you have some questions regarding uh, the excellent presentations of uh, Professor Tariq. Okay, I give uh, okay. one. Okay, there is one uh, member on the query. Okay, just hold a second. Okay, uh, there is one question, Professor. Yes, please. I, I, I'm waiting. Okay. Yes, Just for a second. Okay, please carry on. Uh, all right. Thank you very much for your presentations. Um, I, actually, I want to ask, uh, is there any way to measure the digital company right now? Sorry? Maybe your voice is not... To measure performance in the digital company right now. Digital company? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So one question is uh, regarding uh, measuring the performance, especially on a digital company. Okay. Actually, I in my in my study I choose the non-financial, non-financial uh, sector. The non-financial sector in Jordan has two kinds of companies: industrial companies and service companies. So uh, I uh, I tested my variables because there is a problem in the industrial companies. I choose the 60 uh, companies uh, and uh, I tested my, uh, my variables on such, uh, such companies, just this kind of companies. So that's the answer, Ibutika. Do you have any more further questions regarding the issue? Not in the moment. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Other audiences, do you have any comments or maybe questions? Yes, please. Would you please mention your name and uh, the institutions where you belong? Okay, thank you. Another mic, please. My name is Masnur and from Antoine Universitas Brown Jawa. Yes. Okay. My question is I saw that in the result that the UOB has a negative impact on the market uh, uh, share. If I'm not mistaken from your presentation, that the result is BOD have the negative impact to the market share. Uh, what is actually happening uh, behind that result, actually? Because I it seems I uh, didn't see any emphasis on the explanation towards that result. Thank you. So so the, the question is about the market share. You want to know its relationship with the board size? Sorry? Yes. You want yes. to know? Of the director, I'm not mistaken? Yes. 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 Professor, maybe... Uh, the, the regression analysis. Yes. Uh, what Sorry. is your result? So then we have a better understanding on uh, what Mr. Mansour Masnur's uh, questions. C could you please show, display your uh, the result of your uh, research? Uh -huh. Yes, please. Okay, that would be, I think, better for us to understand one each other. Yes. So we go back to the... Yes, please. Yes. Here. Is this? It, yes. Not that one. Uh, this is the regression. Uh, the result, when is taken, will be only has the negative impact on market share. This is the market share? Yes, yeah, that one. That one, yes. The yes. So the OB yeah. over there, and there is a negative sign that it has a negative impact on market share. 
So you want me to, to show you, to explain to you the relationship between board size and market share? Yes. The results about, about such relationship? Yes. Okay. So as uh, here you can see, there is a negative relationship because the result minus 3.6. What does it mean? This means that once the board of director is large, this will affect negatively on fan performance. So when the board of director is small with a few members, this will be enhanced fan performance. But in this case here, we, can, we could see that it shows that when, the, when there is a more member, more member in the board of director, this will have negative impacts on fan performance. Because you know, you know this, this is in line with the agency theory concept. Because based on agency theory, it prefers to have a small members in board of board of director in order to have uh, to enhance fan performance. Is it clear, Mr. Masnur? Or maybe you have some other points to elaborate? No, oh, of course. Yeah, it's we work. <laughs> so Mr. Masnur now has another point. I'm, I'm, I'm here to answer again, uh, give more explanation, whatever he likes or everyone likes here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, please, Mr. Masnur. Okay, so uh, Professor, we are trying to say that uh, the smaller with the OD is the lower the, the, the company performance will be and that based on the agency theory. So, uh, uh, well, actually, uh, could you please uh, uh, give a further uh, explanation on why it's actually happened uh, by the smaller the OD will give a good uh, 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 impact on the market uh, share or the company performance. I, I couldn't hear your voice. The question is... Uh, we're trying to say that the smaller the BOD is, is the better the company performance will be. So that based on the agency theory that you already explained before, uh, okay. And, and could you please give uh, uh, another elaboration, uh, Professor, towards that statement? I, I give, I give what? Sorry, would you please? Uh, uh, for the uh, elaboration, Professor, from the statement. A, a, uh, elaboration for for the hypothesis that I already developed, for example, or what? What you like? Um, yeah, exactly. Because example, because, it, example, because I. Because in, in here in regression, I tested my hypothesis. So what what you want exactly uh, from me to explain to you? You said you mentioned about agency theory, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What, what what about it? What what you want exactly from me to explain to you? Example, because your voice is is broken. I'm sorry. All right. Example, here. Excuse me, Prof. Would you would you please uh, uh, convey to? Me? Yeah, yeah. Because I cannot hear. Maybe I would like to uh, make some point from. Uh, yes. Masnur's questions. Uh, I would like to summarize that uh, he has a kind of conclusions or a kind of understanding that your result saying that um, the bigger BOD, the uh, lesser impact on the market share, vice versa. Uh -huh. this, this is uh, his understanding. Okay. Uh, maybe uh -huh. is whether this is correct or not, and 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 if he's correct, then would you please explain and elaborate why? Please. Actually, uh, actually, uh, based on the regression analysis, once the board of directors has 
more members, for example, uh, let us say more than 10, to consider it as a, a big size, because here we are measuring the size of board of director. This, this, this variable actually, BOD, the size of board of director, okay? So once we have more, more members, this will affect negatively on performance. Why? Because, because here the opinion for the um, uh, members in the board of director, they, uh, they, they will have like, like a, a conflict in making decision. But once the, uh, the, the, the board of director is small, for example, five, four or six, the more concentration in having a decision. As you know, once the, uh, the members uh, will be uh, expanded to have 12, sometimes 15, it's impossible to have a union to, to have one uh, decision about, for example, uh, some issues, right? So here, agency theory focus on uh, uh, such uh, uh, issue and uh, it recommended to have a small board of director size. Would you, uh, are you trying to say, uh, Professor, that too many cooks ruins the soups? Nice. You give me a nice picture. I put in my uh, mind what you said as a picture and a picture is worth, uh, is worth than a thousand words. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. yes, maybe that's one conclusion or maybe some interpretations on, your, on the result. Nice. Right? nice. With this nice proof. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Masnur? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other audience? Any other questions from the audience, please? No? We still? From Zoom? I okay. cannot see the, the, uh, the audience here, just my... Uh, please sorry. raise your hand. Give us some clue. If you want to ask something, maybe you have some comments or you want to say something, anything. Yeah, it's a free word. It's your choice to do something out of it to get the benefit of this uh, great opportunity. Is that correct, Professor? I'm here to answer any question. Any question. Yes, yes, yes. I'm any. ready here. Yes. With a pleasure. But I cannot see the audience, just I can see my, my the PowerPoint <laughs> of my, okay. Okay. We waiting? Yeah, maybe in another five, 10 seconds. And then uh, if not, we uh, conclude everything and wrap up into a summary. Okay. Okay, Professor, I think okay. there's no other comments from the audiences. That's too bad, but I think it is what it is. Maybe we've been too tired because we start early in the morning, yeah? And we talk yes. about uh, some other issues and so on. So then yeah. I'd like to conclude that uh, this, is, this is very uh, a great opportunity for us, for uh, Brawijaya University, especially on this uh, colloquium, uh, and especially to have you as a um, keynote speaker. Uh, Thank you so much. And uh, very much we will uh, deliver also some uh, from, from uh, committee, yeah? Uh, would you please don't leave uh, before our signing because we are going to present you some, some uh, certificate, yeah, a digital certificate for you. Thank you so much, thank you. Really, I do appreciate the great efforts of this such great international uh, doctoral colloquium and I'm looking forward to have more. Uh, I would like to participate in person, actually. I would like to have the honor to be in this great and beautiful country, Indonesia. Inshallah, yeah. I, I would like. Very much welcome, sir. So, would Thank you please you so much. hand to Professor Arada. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK. Uh, I will give this back to uh, committee, to the master of ceremony. Please, Ibutika.
Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rita, for the moderator, and also for the Associate, Prof Associate Professor uh, Khalid Taufik Yusuf Alamdullah PSD. Uh, now we are going to uh, uh, hand in the e certificate. So for the um, for the committee, would you please uh, show up the e certificate first? It will be handled for the Associate Prof Tariq Taufik Yusuf Alatul PSD from uh, University of Basra, Iraq. Iraq, sorry. Uh, we are waiting for the uh, showing up for the e certificate. Uh, I am a part of the um, committee. We would to stay. Thank you, Art. Ah, that is it. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank you very much. Really, it thank was you. honor uh, for me to participate. Uh, Associate uh, Thanks a lot. Um, thank you very much for um, being case cannot speaker for us and hope we can have uh, another opportunity for the future. And um, it's, it's honor. thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to me to participate to be as a uh, keynote speaker in your very, very respectful international doctoral colloquium and all the best for your university, all the best for all the uh, postgraduate and uh, all the staff belong to this, uh, such a great university. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Uh, you're welcome, uh, Associate Professor Tariq. Next is the e-certificate for Dr. Candidate Otto Fuji Harjo, SA, SH, MM, AK, SCPA, DKP, CA, CPMA, C CSRS, CSRA. For uh, Mr. Otto, would you please stand up? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you. Okay. Uh, now, um, uh, okay, so uh, we will jump for the next sessions. And uh, for uh, Associate Prof. Tarik Tovik, you see Alatula PSD, if wants to um, stay, stay tuned with us, uh, this is really uh, honorable for us, and you may. Uh, you may stay with us until the end of the session because actually we are going to have another sessions and then for the uh, for the honorable audiences uh, we will go for the next sessions uh, while we are going for the next for the audiences who wants to have a coffee break and also for a drink break uh, may leave uh, the room for a, for, um, a few minutes and then can come back again it started at 3 40, 3.40, so it's, I think it's about five minutes, five minutes to So there's no, if uh, there are, so, yeah. And uh, we still are going for an next session. Um, okay, so uh, we are going for the fourth session. No, uh, we go to another great and important topic about research method methodology, methodology and accounting. And this topic is an urge for us to know, to decide which way that we need to adapt, to conduct our dissertations or even paper writing so that it will be strengthened at the internal and external validity. And on this session, we'll have a professor of Adam Smith, Business School, University of Glasgow, United Kingdom. And the moderator is one of, actually, she is one of our favorite lectures also. And also the, as a secretary department accounting uh, in Universitas Bawijaya. So without further ado, let us now start our program by welcoming Professor Benjamin Wickramensih, PSD, and Dr. Sari Admini, SA, MSA, AK, MSE, to deliver the sessions. So please, uh, welcome. Dr. Sari Admini, and also Prof. Denter. Denter. Yeah, waiting. Uh, 
43. Oh, 43. Uh, joining. Okay. So uh, we're waiting for the sessions. For Ibu Sari. Okay, Ibu Sari, how are you today? Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, yes Musari, uh, thank you very much for the time. And I want to hear for the Zoom audiences. Can I hear a voice from the uh, Zoom audiences? And once again, uh, for audiences who want to have coffee break and also for pray, um, may leave the room for a moment and then can come back again to continue for the uh, for the for sessions in these discussions. Okay, Musari, how are you today? Um, the last time I saw you, whenever we have uh, matriculations, yes, uh, actually, um, we were for a new world, actually, and we were really inspiring by your sessions because we had a lot of discussions, and then we uh, we remember a lot of things about the basic accounting. Thank you very much about that, and this is um, another for me. We can meet up again on this event. And um, how is uh, your day and being um, the last but not least moderators for today? And this is about the research methodology, right? All right. And uh, you may ask, uh, I do not say the Zoom. Yeah. Um, thank, thank for the committee, would you please uh, show us the uh, Zoom audiences? Can we see again? Okay, that's uh, 55, right, participants. Okay, that's- Ah, okay. Uh, can you do Dr. Nining? Okay, you can show Dr. Nining. Yes, uh, how are you, Dr. Nining? Oh, sorry, which one? Oh, Dr. Mimi Ikawanini. Okay, can I, can I, um, friends? Hi. Hi, Dr. Yes. Okay, who are you? Which is on cam? Uh, please wait a minute. Thank Dr. Lucy. We are waiting for the show. Okay. We're waiting for um, Dr. Mimi. We also have um, Dr. Lucy. Yes, Rob. Uh, it's still with us also. Yes, thank you, Ms. Mia. I'm Hi. here. All right. Dr. Living, thank you so much for your time. So, um, how are you today? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. A uh, little bit flu, but I feel better right now. Okay, hope you can get in uh, soon. Uh, we hope you can get it well very soon, yeah? um, Dr. Nini. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, um, what is your opinion about our argument today? Which one is uh, the most favorite for you? Uh, of course, if it gives us many benefits, especially for uh, doctor candidate, we can share our uh, research and uh, uh, we receive many meaningful insight participants and from the assessor uh, to make our research uh, to be better in the future. All right, and um, is there any favorite uh, part for sessions? Sorry? Is there any favorite uh, sessions? Oh, uh, I think it's... All the season is uh, very interesting. So all of them are very, uh, my, my favorite uh, session. Okay, thank you. Um, 
So, uh, how is about Dr. Z? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ning. You're welcome. Okay, uh, can I hear a voice from Dr. Z? Uh, yes. Hello. Yeah, hello, Dr. Z. Where are you now? I'm in Bali. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, what do you think about our agenda today? Uh, everything is uh, interesting uh, about the speaker, keynote speaker, uh, uh, many uh, knowledge can uh, uh, we have from uh, from uh, uh, the matter of uh, presenting uh, uh, in uh, uh, parallel session we have uh, many advice for uh, uh, for my uh, for uh, our um, article that's all all right thank you um do you have any suggestion for us for uh, the next year is there any a specific topic that you want to uh, to to have with us for the next year? Uh, yes, everything is uh, uh, good. Um, uh, the hybrid uh, makes me from uh, not from uh, Malang can uh, can join this uh, this uh, event. Yeah, so that's good. For me, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, do, or do you want to say something with us here, for example, for a prof echo or maybe others? <laughs> okay, uh, for prof echo, I say thank you uh, for uh, the uh, this event. Uh, I can uh, present my uh, my. Uh, article and uh, have uh, advice from the uh, assessor uh, and then I have uh, many uh, uh, I have many uh, issue uh, uh, like sustainability SDGs uh, new issue for me uh, for maybe the speaker is uh, uh, next next speaker maybe uh, Another, another uh, uh, topic. Yeah, it will be uh, good. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Otunsi, for the suggestions. I hope we can uh, see one to another again on the next year. All right. Um, uh, I'm going to mention something to me. Prof. Tentu already with us. From then, are you with us? Okay, I'm going to a call. Now it's uh, no, it's three forty-five. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, hello, uh, Professor Dent. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. How are you today? Good. Sorry. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, we are really good and great here, and we cannot wait to we cannot wait to uh, hear your sessions. And Trofeko going to say hi to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, please give a hand one more time to uh, Dr. Sari Admini and Prof. Dancher.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, dear audience uh, in this room and also uh, the audience who in uh, Zoom meeting. Yeah, uh, in this last session, we are going uh, to have a special session with Professor Denja Vikramasinghe. I hope that I pronounce your name correctly, Professor. Yeah, uh, give me a moment. I'm trying to uh, yes. set up the sharing. Okay. Um, okay. How we start? Yeah, it's, it's working now. Yeah. yeah okay. I... Can you see the um, yeah. screen? Sorry. Yeah. PowerPoint slides? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything is okay now, that's all, thank you. Yeah. Ready? Okay, yeah. Before we can start, I think it is better for me to introduce you to the audience first. Yeah, uh, Professor Denzel, we come and sing um, has a very extensive curriculum vitae, so I think I do uh, want to um, read all of the curriculum vitae and I summarize in yeah. The important things. Professor Denzel Vikramasinghe is the chair in management accounting and the director of the PhD program in accounting and finance at Adam Smith Business School. And he has been doing an academician for more than 37 years. Uh, he is now globally known as a critical researcher in accounting in developing countries. And his areas of expertise include the cultural political economy of management accounting and controls in developing countries, governance and accountability in globally diffuse reform programs, property alleviation and participative development projects, as well as emerging practices of accounting, governance and accountability in new organizational configuration. And his lecturing areas include management accounting and controls, management accounting and organization, uh, and society and management control system. And uh, Professor Denzel publications are also very extensive. From 2004 up to 2022, he has already published more than 40 articles in international reputable journals, such as accounting, organization, and society, Auditing and Accountability Journal, Critical Perspective in Accounting, Accounting and Business Research, Accounting and Organizational Team, Qualitative Research in Accounting and Management, and Accounting in Emerging Economies. Uh, he also has published two books entitled uh, Strategizing Management Accounting, Liberal Origins, and New Liberal Trends, uh, published in 20. Uh, 18 and management accounting change approaches and perspective published in 2007. Okay, uh, yeah, Professor, we can uh, start now. Time is yours. Yeah, okay, give me a moment. Uh, what happened? Okay, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Good, yeah, can you see these slides? Yes, yes. Can you see the PowerPoint slides? Yeah. Good, yeah. All right, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I've been asked to spend about uh, half an hour or so uh, to talk about research methodology in accounting. As you, as you heard about my profile, I'm a qualitative researcher publishing in internationally recognized articles in reputed journals. Most of my PhD students uh, undertake 
qualitative case studies. Therefore, when I talk about accounting research methodology or methodology for accounting, I like to concentrate today on the ways in which qualitative case studies can be conducted. In Glasgow, I do two sessions on this for the first year PhD students, for them to know generally about what qualitative research is. Therefore, this session is called session one. There will be a session two through which you can go into more details of how to conduct a qualitative case study. Aim of this session is to I'm trying to is to talk about how we can go about choosing an appropriate research project for doing an accounting case study for a PhD for an internationally publishable research paper. And then we need to think about how I went or how my PhD student went about particular project, framing the issues and forming theorization. Before I embark on this discussion, for qualitative researchers such as us, Accounting is a social science. It is not only a technical procedural practice confining to set of accounting reports or practices of organizations, but accounting is also a social, institutional, political practice embedded in a wider social, historical, political, cultural context. Accounting cannot be divorced. Accounting cannot be taken off from this wider context. Qualitative researchers understand accounting as part of this broad socioeconomic, political, and historical context. Hence, accounting must be studied in the context of such wider situations, in the context of history of a particular country, in the context of politics in a particular country, in the context of the economy of a particular country. Therefore, accounting must be regarded as not, not just technical calculations, not just about accounting standards, not just about how to calculate cost, but also well-embedded social, institutional, and historical practice. Qualitative researchers try to understand the interplay between accounting practices in an organization or in a particular community or particular country with the broader context in which such accounting practices operate. Therefore, we have a broad understanding, broad definition for accounting. We consider accounting as a social science. 
our Adam Smith Business School here at the University of Glasgow is within the Faculty of Social Sciences. We call it College of Social Sciences. We share social sciences. We draw on social sciences such as sociology, economics, anthropology, political science, history, etc., in order to understand how accounting practices are embedded in such context. Therefore, when you come to framing, when you come to frame accounting issues, and when you come to theorize accounting issues, we understand accounting or we regard accounting as such a source of science. What is a qualitative study? Perhaps we can define it as a case study. Qualitative study can be defined as a case study. A case can be a single company, a single organization, a particular village, a community, or particular industry. It can be a case, a particular division or a department of a large organization. It can be a case study. And such a small case study is good enough, sufficient enough for a PhD even to undertake a proper qualitatively informed case study. But by studying such a small case study, we try to address a wider question of our time why the question, the global world, the entire world faces. We like to see a global issue from the lenses of a particular case occurring at a particular tiny grassroots level operation. And also qualitative case study value not quantitative analysis, not regression analysis, not economic-based agency theory-like analysis. Instead, we try to undertake a sociological analysis, for example, or an anthropological analysis, or an ethnographic analysis or ethno-methodology analysis, or a historical analysis, a political analysis, or very discursive analysis. And such analysis sit in what we call post-positivistic traditions in accounting research, not in positivistic traditions in accounting research. Almost all our accounting PhD students here in Glasgow take this approach, post-positivistic approaches. The best universities in the UK, what we call Russell Group universities in the UK, including my own university, most accounting researchers follow this post-positivistic tradition. Unlike in the US, post-positivistic tradition is a European tradition. It's a European generation. It's a European development, post-positivistic tradition. But elsewhere, there are universities in Canada, even in the US and Australia and New Zealand who appreciate this tradition, doing qualitative case study for a PhD, for a research publication in an advanced journal, internationally reputed journal. <laughs> for a qualitative case study, 
data can be qualitative. They can be in terms of opinions. They can be in terms of statements. They can be in terms of written text from reports. Therefore, range of second resources, such as historical records, official documents can be used to undertake ethnographic observations, but also data can be collected from various other forms, what we call through a process of triangulation. That means you may start with understanding a particular context of a particular company or of a particular village or of a particular industry or of a particular community by reading official documents, reports, parliamentary debates, etc. Then you may approach key actors in that particular research site, the organization. Then you may conduct some formal or informal interviews, conversations, long chats, either through face-to-face -face engagements or Zoom-based discussions or telephone conversations. And also, you may be there, you must be there physically, it is better. Most of our PhD students spend about six months, nine months in such a particular research site in order to see the things, in order to hear the things, in order to observe the things, in order to live with the things for a particular ethnographic engagement, ethnographic involvement. So you may talk to people, you may see the people, you may smell the situation, you may understand everything from every angle. So that is a kind of triangulation in data collection. But also unlike quantitative researchers, qualitative researchers, ethnographic researchers such as we value subjective interpretation, your subjective biasness, your subjective involvement, your own opinions and interpretations are combined with what the others say and combined with what you see in reports, you see in the press. Therefore, we value subjective interpretations. That is the interpretive scheme, according to Max Weber, famous sociologist, famous German sociologist, Max Weber valued this subjective interpretation. Any social reality, any social reality, such as how accounting functions in a particular situation cannot be fully comprehended without your own subjective interpretations. Therefore, as part of data collection, you may use secondary sources, but also you may use your own opinions in conjunction with the interviews, discussions, conversations, long chats, telephone conversations, etc. Therefore, there is no any particular way of collecting data for a qualitative case study. You must be there. You need to make decisions. 
as to how you need to study there, how you need to approach the people, how you understand the context, how you get yourself involved in the situation. You need to decide. In order to do that, you need to start with an interesting question. Questions are not, you write in so-called problem statements. Lots of students misunderstand research questions. They think research questions are practical problems, policy problems, management problems, such as how to enhance the practices of balance scorecard in the company, or how to familiarize IFRS in Indonesia. They are policy questions. They are not research questions. Research questions are intellectual puzzles. You develop by reading the literature. Literature means not textbooks, not local articles, not local official reports. Literature means recently published journal articles appearing in internationally recognized journals. Research is inherently international. Research can be seen as a debate always in the literature. There are debates. There are unfinished businesses in the literature, debates. You need to be plugged into such a current, important, interesting debate. Then you can find a particular gap and that gap can be a question. Then you may have an aim to do something. And that aim also your research question. Research gap, research question, research problem, all are the same. Don't try to differentiate them. When you read the literature, when you are plugged into a particular current debate, you may find something missing. You may find something not well done. You may find something that has been neglected. And that is the research question. And to do a qualitative case study, this research question must also be linked to a wider social economic and political issue of our time. For example, nowadays, people are talking about the issues of global warming and the needs of global sustainability and the needs of the embarkment of sustainable development, whatever you do, accounting, biology, chemistry, you need to be aware of the need of sustainable development. So your research question, therefore, must be linked better to a wider social, economic, and political issue of our time. And also, you need to discuss with your supervisor whether your research question is enough for a PhD or enough for a particular publication. The other important thing is, lots of people think that qualitative case study is just collecting data from interviews and analyzing the data based on several themes. Okay, there is no problem about it. But in the end, when you have 
understood a particular situation in relation to a particular research question, which has been derived from a literature review. You need to tell us an interesting story, story, like in a novel, like in a film, like in a drama. And throughout the story, you need to show how the question, the question has been addressed throughout the story. And also, you need to make sense of that story. A journalist can also write such a story. addressing a particular current issue in the particular situation. But the difference between the journalist investigative story and our story is that we use a theory to make sense of that story. When you sing a song, you use music. Then the song will be interesting to hear. And there will be a nice melody also to enjoy with. Similarly, in a qualitative case study, we use a theory to echo the story, to illuminate the story, to create a melody for the story, to make people attractive to hear the story. That is the meaning of making sense of a story. Therefore, we use a theory as a tool, as an explanatory device, or as a way of presenting a story in order to make sense of the question being addressed. Therefore, theory is not something to be practiced by a manager. Balance scorecard is not a theory. IFR is, FRS is not a theory. In accounting, double entry bookkeeping is not a theory. They are practices or they are ideas to practice. Mm -hmm. Accounting has no theory. Of course. Accounting has no theory. Accounting has only ideas to practice in different contexts, in different ways. But you can observe the use of such ideas in different contexts as a qualitative researcher. And you can examine what is going on? So you need to make sense of a particular interesting story by telling the story theoretically, by telling the story from a standpoint of a particular theory. Therefore, theory is not something to practice. Theory is something to see a particular story. Therefore, theory has lenses. Different theories should have different lenses. You may choose one. <laughs> then you will have one lens, one standpoint, one particular perspective. 
And from that perspective, you may tell us the story. And these theories are normally drawn from other sources, sciences, because accounting has no theory. We draw theories from economics. For example, lots of uh, finance researchers nowadays draw from draw theories from economics, such as agency theory. Agency theory is an extension of neoclassical economics or transaction cost economics. So we may draw theories from economics or sociology, history, political theory, international relations, anthropology, etc., etc. Accounting has no theory. Therefore, we draw theory from other disciplines. And we use a theory to develop a perspective, to develop a standpoint, to use it as a lens to make sense of the story. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have to remind you that you only have five minutes left. Sorry? Five minutes. Five minutes, yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Um, so I have already mentioned that you need to select an interesting research project. You need to follow these procedures before going into the field work. By doing a critical review of the literature, you need to formulate the research question. I mentioned that. And you have to be clear of what kind of data you are going to collect and how. Then you need to have a detailed fieldwork plan before you go there. <laughs> when you make a theoretical choice, you can't do it before the, before the data collection. Before the data collection, you might have a general idea. You need to make the clear choice when the story is clearer. In the end, at the end of the field work. And also you need to think how you can make a contributions to the literature back theoretically. How you can speak to your fellow researchers around the world by telling them a particular interesting theoretical development. <clears throat> I have published a paper on microfinance. My research site, case study, was a rural village in Sri Lanka. I studied poor women's life in that village. I used a post Foucauldian theoretical perspective to see how these women live their lives. I conducted field work over a period of four years in the summers when I went to Sri Lanka. I discussed my findings with my co-authors Chandana and Cam, Cam from Canada. Then we decided to use Foucault's, Michel Foucault's, French philosopher, Michel Foucault's governmentality framework. <clears throat> Coupled with the writings of Hart and Negri, who wrote the famous book, Empire. So then we theorize our story. We said that there are processes of global economic product production now diffused throughout society down to the level of individual in everyday life. And we found, we developed a particular theoretical argument in, with microfinance people develop micro-accountability. 
That is our conclusion of the paper. We analyze the data in order to illustrate that micro accountability development. Then we published a paper. It took about four years to do that. And we published the paper, published the paper uh, in, in, a, in a very reputed accounting journal called AOS, Accounting Organizations and Society. Micro accountability and biopolitics. Microfinance in a Sri Lankan village. You can Google this paper and read the paper to understand how we used a particular methodology in there in order to write this accounting paper, which is called micro accountability. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pienzer. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for such a lovely presentation about um, qualitative research in accounting. And I'm sure that this topic is very important for all of us because it is very relevant with what we are doing right now. Yeah. And uh, you as uh, corporate students. Yeah. Uh, okay, and the audience, is there anything that you want to ask to Professor Denzel? I think this is a very um, good opportunity to have Professor Denzel here with us. Okay, silakan. The uh, Zoom audience. Yeah. Okay, Pak Mas Nur, silakan. Yeah, we have uh, Mr. Mas Nur here that wants to ask you uh, something from the danger. Danger. Sorry, um. Is somebody asking a question? I can't hear well. Yeah, dengaran bu. Pakai ini, pakai itu. Please speak up. Just wait a moment, Rosita. Sorry. Yeah. Am I audible right now, Prof? Am I audible? Can you my yeah, I can. I can vaguely hear you. It's not very much clear. Are you asking a question? Please ask. All right. So my question is: uh, Do I already decide or want theory to become our perspective in our research? How to make such a boundary in order to limit our uh, research so we could be focused on? Uh, making uh, the result uh, based on what we aim at the beginning because uh, from what uh, I've been experienced before uh, when we only try to put uh, we only try to choose a certain theory and sometimes the research become a quiet broad even even broader than what we already decide at the beginning so the, res the, the result become a quiet bias, especially in qualitative uh, way. So, based on your uh, presentation, is there any steps or is there any uh, way for us as a qualitative researcher to uh, 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 research in order to focus to uh, give a uh, theoretical uh, 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 a new theoretical perspective uh, as the result of our research, Professor. That's my uh, question. I didn't hear the question very well. Um, my gut feeling 
is that you might be asking me how you may go for a particular focus. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Any research must be focused on a particular question, particular issue, particular aim, to fill a particular gap, all are the same. As a qualitative researcher, we don't know prior to, prior to the research what will be interesting in a particular story because we don't know what the story is yet. Therefore, you may start with a particular broad issue. For example, I, I tell you lots of examples. One of my PhD students who recently completed her PhD, she's now waiting for the viva. She's from Bangladesh and she studied Bangladesh farmers cultivating rice in a particular rural village. And that particular village is supported by the government through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Project. So she wanted to study how SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, produce accounting practices at mundane level, at grassroots level, for example, in a village, in a remote village. That was her broad idea. Then she conducted the field work. Later on, she realized that these farmers are governed. These farmers are controlled or these farmers are disciplined by the idea of sustainability by the discourse of sustainability on a daily basis. For that, there are regular meetings with farmers. There are lots of workshops for farmers. There are lots of messages being passed on to farmers. There are lots of notice boards in local offices for farmers. By doing all these things, the idea of sustainability is being mobilized into the bodies of, into the souls of farmers for them to be disciplined, for them to be governed. Then, that is very interesting. So farmers' lives are reproduced differently through the idea of sustainability. Then she realized that various kinds of documents, meetings, programs, workshops, visits, advices, all these are the elements of making them governable. And those elements, they are for accounting practices, like budgets, like balance scorecards. But these are different, operating in a particular village, 
remote village of a poor farmers. Then she focused on these accounting elements, how these accounting elements constitute a form of governmentality or governance, a disciplinary practice in rural villages. She understood how global practices are being mobilized through national governments and into down to the grassroots level, villages and the lives of farmers. So it was a very narrow down focus. But this story is very interesting because this story tells us what is going on today in the world about sustainable development. Therefore, your, your research findings, your research story, as I said at the beginning, must be linked to a broader political, social, and economic issue of our time. I didn't understand your question very well, but I, I thought that you are asking that. But research must be focused on a particular thing. If there is no any focus, there is no any thesis. The meaning of a thesis is a focused endeavor, focused exercise. And PhD therefore is a small thing, focusing on a particular thing. So is a research paper. Research paper is a small thing, focusing on a particular interesting thing. In my PhD students case was that it's a nice story to see how these farmers are being governed by SDGs on a daily basis how farmers' lives are being reproduced. And she extended our microfinance paper. And she started reading our microfinance paper. Again, how rural poor microfinance women are governed by accounting technologies. She extended this understanding by studying SDGs in Bangladesh. I hope I answered the question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Tenja. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I think we are still many uh, questions, many things that you want to know um, in, de in detail yeah, but, uh, from the participants, but I think that the time is up, yeah. And uh, now it is 4.35 p.m. here, so I think we have to end this session. And uh, once again, uh, thank you very much, Professor Tienter, for the time and for the uh, very lovely and very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, just for a quick, quick applause. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the opportunity. And also thank you very much for the question about which I didn't understand well. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Tenter. Uh, we come on CPSD and Dr. Sari, Dr. Sari Admini, SAMSA at KMSE. And uh, before we end our sessions, there is an e-certificate. Oh. Um, yeah. For the companies, please uh, show up for the e-certificate. Uh, first is for Prof. Dental Recramancy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Dent, for your, uh, uh, your joining with us uh, today. And we got a lot of enlightenment about the research methodology. Hope we can um, 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 join again for our future. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then See you next time. Is, yes. Do you want to say something, Prof. Dent? Okay. Okay. Um, do, do you hear me? No, okay.
Okay, um, next is a uh, certificate for Dr. Sari Atmini. Please, for the committee to show up the e certificate. Okay. Thank you very much, Musari, for time that we can uh, see again for the future. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we had listened and learned from those four key speakers, and it can be increased our comprehensive because uh, we had discussed about the corporate governance, management accounting, accounting and SDGs, and also research methodology and accounting. And now we are coming in announcement. I'm sure that this is a, a session that everyone wants to hear, especially also for the Zoom participants. Well, I can see the spirits. All right, for the, for the um, Zoom participants, the uh, comedy, would you please show up? I would like to see the Zoom participants. All right, so we still have 40. Thank you very much for uh, 40 participants and also the uh, audience here in the venue. Well, uh, there will be um, eight awards and every uh, awards will, uh, will have two winners, the first and second winners. So guys, are you ready to know who is the winners for today? Show up. Please show up for the first category. Okay, for the comedy, please show up for the who is the first category. Okay, oh, drum roll, please, everyone. Okay, I can hear in this menu. <laughs> All right, comedy. Would you please show? <laughs> oh, we're really sorry because the best audience is not one an hour away. Maybe for the next year. <laughs> Yes, sorry about that. Yes, we are we really appreciate for your efforts. Yes, thank you. Mm. You got people are learning, aren't they? <laughs> okay, please. So first is going for the best research method for non-mainstream paradigm. Okay. Okay. Is there any name? scoring is still ongoing yeah because the charges are really um are difficult to get because i think the score is very good one to another that's why they still need the time okay so while we're waiting for a score i would like to ask the, the audiences here we we'll also share something about what we have got today Maybe a man with a red shirt. <laughs> okay, the representative of the best audiences today. <laughs> okay, if anyone wants to share something about today in this venue, 
Is anyone? You can say also in Bahasa. Is anyone? Zoom is, yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to ask one Zoom. Okay. I think you knew everyone is really serious, yeah? Okay. All right. Um, how about uh, uh, someone in the Zoom wants to say something? Oh, I saw um, this is one of my best friend also, Bapak Indrayani. Are you still with us? Bapak <laughs> Indrayani wants to say something? Yeah. Miss uh, Katika, thank you for wonderful international colloquium. <laughs> that is the first time for me to join this event. Thank you very much for all the information and the new knowledge for me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your opinion. See you soon here in Malang, Pak Imrayani. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> He's from Aceh and I'm sure that he will be here soon. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, please, is there anyone who wants to say something? Oh, um, Ibu Nihlatul Kudus, you want to say something? Ibu Nihlatul? Ibu Nihlatul, how are you? Okay, fine. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Oh, by the way, today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Juni Lato. Okay, happy birthday. Thank you. you. Juni Lato. Yeah, if you want to say something about this event. Ibu bisa mendengar suara saya? Agak itu putus-putus. Oh oke. Okay. Bisa dengar suara saya bu? Kalau ini? Iya yeah, mbak. Oke. Okay. Ibu okay. bilang mau mengucapkan sesuatu nggak tentang hari ini apa yang sudah didapatkan? Ah, alhamdulillah. Dengan mengikuti acara ini bertambah banyak ya wawasan saya terkait dengan artikel-artikel yang diberikan dan juga uh, pengetahuan misalnya seperti itu di hari ini. Thank you very much. Oke, okay. uh, kalau untuk tahun depan Ibu ada saran nggak kira-kira akan membahas tentang apa? Hmm, apa ya Mbak Gita? Enaknya. <laughs> Mungkin Ibu mau teliti atau ada saran lain? Hmm, kalau hari ini sih it's very good, mungkin nanti isu-isu uh, yang mungkin untuk tahun depan kan bisa jadi beda ya dengan isu-isu yang sekarang ini, jadi mungkin lebih uh, berkembang lagi ya, jadi mungkin artikel yang sekarang bisa lebih berkembang untuk uh, artikel yang yang akan datang, gitu. karena kita uh, salah satu artikel tadi kan mengenai ada yang terkait dengan Uh, masa pandemi. Nah sekarang ini kan kita sudah melewati, insya Allah ya sudah melewati masa pandemi dan ya mungkin uh, mungkin untuk yang ke depan next uh, akan lebih baik. Iya, baik terima kasih Bu Nila untuk sarannya. Kami akan simpan untuk uh, uh, acara yang di akan datang ya Bu Nila. Tetap semangat Ibu Thank hari ini. Thank you. Baik. Uh, Uh, Panitia, saya boleh minta tolong untuk melihat yang lain? Boleh ditampilkan lagi pesertanya? Mari kita lihat tempat puluh peserta lainnya. Mungkin by name aja ya. Oke, okay. um, di sini ada Iwayan Plat Platyanta. Baik, Pak Iwayan ada yang mau disampaikan, silakan open mic dan open um, video. Pak Iwayan.
okay, uh, for others uh, mau mungkin dengan nama-nama uh, bisa dis, uh, kasih tahu namanya, Mas Panitia. Ditampilkan nama-namanya. Oke, kita lihat. Baik, uh, mungkin agak ke bawah lagi. Oke. Ke bawah lagi. Oke, kita ada Ibu Nur Rafita Hanon. Ibu Nur. Boleh minta tolong untuk open mic? Mendengar suara saya, Ibu Nur Rafita? Baik, saya menunggu Ibu Nur Rafita ya. Uh, di sini juga ada ya. Uh, Ibu Nanda Widaninggar dari tadi Ibu sangat semangat nih Bu untuk ikut di sini. Bagaimana Bu kabarnya? Assalamualaikum, selamat sore Ibu. Selamat sore, Ibu ada di mana saat ini? Saya ada di Kota Bondowoso di Jawa Timur. Oh baik, oke. Okay. Ibu PDIA atau sudah selesai atau? Saya program dokter ilmu akuntansi angkatan tahun 2021. Oh baik kakak kelas saya. Mohon bimbingannya. Oh, iya. Salam kenal. Ya salam kenal ibu. Bagaimana bu untuk mengikuti acara hari ini? Luar biasa ya. Saya sangat uh, beruntung merasa beruntung dan berbangga hati bisa bergabung dalam kolokium doktoral program. Uh, tahun 2022 karena juga paper-paper yang disampaikan tadi di kelas luar biasa semuanya dan multi paradigm semua <laughs> jadi uh, semakin banyak mengenal budaya-budaya di seluruh Nusantara kemudian mengenal berbagai metodologi yang uh, saya sendiri mungkin belum pernah ketahui sebelumnya kemudian juga uh, bagaimana penyampaian Materi-materi dari keynote speaker semuanya luar biasa. Termasuk oh. juga uh, komitenya. Terima kasih. Baik, terima kasih, Bu. Kira-kira ada saran nggak, Bu, untuk uh, tahun depan kira-kira akan menulis tentang apa? Tahun depan menulis tentang apa? Oh, Nah, itu dia ya. Saya sendiri untuk yang paper sekarang itu juga... Uh, apa? Idenya tidak direncana gitu dari tahun sebelumnya. Jadi ini merupakan ya sebagian atau irisan dari independent study uh, saya dengan yang dibimbing oleh pro, para promotor. Jadi untuk tahun depan menulis apa mungkin ya masih di tema yang sama, tetapi mungkin dari sisi lain dari tema tersebut. Begitu juga luar biasa juga. Uh, Ibu bahasa Inggrisnya ya tadi bagus sekali. Baik terima kasih Bu saya di oh, oh, kemarin langsung. Oh iya dadakan aja seperti itu ya gimana kalau latihan. Oke okay, baik terima kasih Ibu uh, semoga kita bisa bersama ya. uh, dan semoga juga tetap semangat Bu untuk melanjutkan disertasinya. Menjadikan... Ah, terima kasih terima kasih Amin Amin semoga lancar semuanya dan lulus tepat waktu. Baik. Uh, almost finished. Oh. Almost finished. Baik, oke okay, baik. Terima kasih Ibu. Sekarang kita bisa masuk ke pawawan Bapak dari tadi. Dari tadi sungguh Bapak sangat luar biasa. Mungkin kita ke depan pawangan.
Okay. Baik, selamat sore Pak Wawan. Sorry. Salam kenal ya Pak Wawan. Kenal. Saya Tika. Oh iya, C. Salaman. Pak Wawan dari mana aslinya? Saya dari Bali. Oh dari Bali. Oke. Okay. Angkatan tahun berapa Pak? Malu saya. Saya angkatan tahun 2015. Ya, belum terlihat Pak dari bulan bulannya ini ya. masih muda ya. ya, ya. semangatnya semua sangat muda luar biasa baik Pak Wan ada komen ya kira-kira untuk hari ini uh, apa yang ingin Bapak dapatkan yang saya dapatkan cukup banyak ya Bu ya cukup banyak informasi terkait ya banyak dari rekan-rekan yaitu yang tulisan yang bagus-bagus dan pelaksanaannya sangat baik sangat bahagia di sini itu aja. Alhamdulillah bahagia berarti imunnya bertambah ya Pak. Sangat ibu ibu. Baik kira-kira ada saran nggak Pak untuk tahun depan sebaiknya seperti apa gitu? Oh untuk tahun depan itu dari teman saya tadi ada bos audiensnya. Oh, audiens, oke. Okay. Audiens Pak Duan. Tadi itu kan juga nggak saya pernah. Oh iya betul. Jadi ya. tadi kan Pak Bapak kan dari angkatan yang masih baru nih Pak. Baiklah, mungkin mau say something. Profesor, mungkin. Jadi observer. Baik, terima kasih untuk Pak siapa? Maaf ini. Pak Wawa. Baik. Saya tidak diingat ini, Pak. Bajunya sebelah kecil. Baik, baiklah, Pak Wawa. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Wawa. Baik, tadi ada bos audiens selain teman saya pakai pakai baju merah tadi siapa kawan? Bos audiensnya tadi? Oke, oh, Pak Rizky mau maju ke depan, Pak Rizky. Silakan. Iya, iya. Saya lihat tadi Pak Rizky sangat memotivasi teman-temannya ya. Silakan maju ke depan. Pak Rizky dari mana aslinya? Kalau asli saya Gorontalo. Oh baik Gorontalo. Sekarang kalau sekarang sudah di Malang ya berarti. Saya dari Gorontalo jauh-jauh tapi sudah berpisah di sana. Oh iya betul banget. Oke nanti mungkin bisa audiensnya tahun depan ya Pak ya. Amin. Oke tetap stay tune ya nanti untuk acara ini. Oke jadi kalau menurut Pak Pak Rizky. Pak Rizky oke salah lagi. Untuk Pak Rizky apakah ada opini untuk hari ini? Ya, kalau uh, untuk acara hari ini sangat luar biasa ya. Dari uh, penataan semuanya, sistematika, rules dari kegiatannya, itu benar-benar sudah ditatap dengan sangat baik oleh panitia. Luar biasa, sangat kita aplaus dan apresiasi ya. Karena panitianya sangat luar biasa menyiapkan ini. Semua room itu juga tadi sampai full ruangannya, sampai tadi bahkan ada yang tidak bisa masuk karena kursinya habis jadi udah terisi semua Baik. nah jadi <laughs> akhirnya wah berarti ini benar-benar kegiatannya sangat diminati ya semoga nanti ini adalah yang pertama nanti tahun depannya akan bisa lebih baik lagi oke tadi di room berapa room satu oh. tapi saya pindah-pindah makanya termasuk kategori bis audience jadi satu dua tiga saya saya oh, coba semua mungkin bapak observasi ya, <laughs> ya observasi <laughs> juga ternyata memang setiap room itu uh, terbaik semua uh, dari segi moderatornya kemudian presenternya semuanya. Baik. Saya rasa sudah ready untuk pengumumannya. Sebelum Bapak <laughs> kembali ke sana. Oh, ya. Kira-kira ada saran nggak buat kami? Untuk kedepannya? Iya. Ya, untuk kedepannya uh, mungkin awardnya bisa lebih banyak ya. Okay. <laughs> kemudian yang kedua um, saya kehabisan apa namanya saran untuk perbaikan karena memang semuanya udah sangat terbaik ya bahkan snack aja dapat dua kali Tuh, <laughs> makan siang juga dapat jadi kalau misalnya snacknya cuma satu kali mungkin saran saya tahun depan dua kali oh baik, baik. <laughs> tapi karena sudah dua kali jadi udah good oke okay. berarti <laughs> isi terpenuhi ya pak ya udah terpenuhi okay, semuanya berani. kita bahagia di sini ya teman-teman ya oke okay. nanti, nanti mungkin lagi. mungkin sarannya cuma buat ini aja buat audiens yang di zoom mm -hmm. Kalau tahun ini lewat Zoom, tahun depan harus luring. Ah, Oke, okay, benar. Terima <laughs> kasih untuk Pak. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Oke, okay. Pak terakhir lagi. Angkatan berapa, Pak? <laughs>
Alhamdulillah saya sebentar lagi lulus. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Amin. Angkatan di 2015 oh, sama kayak Pak Wawan. Oh baik, baik, baik. Semoga yeah. nanti dilancarkan ya semuanya. Amin. Baik. Terima Siap. kasih Pak Rizky. Terima kasih. Baik, untuk Pak Rizky. Baik. Uh, saya melihat bahwa sebetulnya uh, duduk di belakang itu memberikan motivasi juga kepada kami yang masih baru ya. Bahwa uh, perlu untuk semangat dalam uh, menyelesaikan masa studi kami yang masih baru tiga minggu ya Bu Bulan. <laughs> Baik, yang masih baru tiga minggu nanti mohon bimbingannya untuk kakak-kakak kelas dan juga Pak Oto mungkin sebelah sana. Mantap. <laughs> Baik. Baik, terima kasih. Oh, kita sudah akan masuk pada announcement. Ini adalah satu yang kita tunggu-tunggu. Boleh drum roll sekali lagi Bapak Ibu yang ada di sini dan juga Bapak Ibu yang ada di Zoom. Dengarkan ya, sampai akan menjadi best. Best of each categories ya. Baik, kita akan masuk pada the first winner best research method for non-mainstream paradigm. Okay, uh, the audience, I will announce about the the best research methods for non-mainstream paradigm. Yeah, uh, maybe ning namanya siapa? Okay, this article uh, has a title Pupa Babu Gura Rato Philosophy in Practice of Individual Performance. Uh, in the first, uh, the best paper, yeah. And the second, uh, the best paper for the method for non-mainstream paradigm, Pancasila Based uh, Sustainability. Sustainable Finance Holistic uh, Deconstruction Towards Sustainability in Indonesia. Yeah. Adil. Adil. So, so, who is the name? Uh, we are not giving the name. Nanda. Nanda Wida. Wida Ning. Oh. <laughs> Nanda. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, the first, uh, the best research okay. method for non mainstream non -mainstream paradigm. Okay. Congratulations, Ibu. Thank you very much. No, oh, itu okay. Nanda Wiratkar. Yeah. Okay. okay congratulations. The second, uh, best research method. Thank you very much, Prof. Gendis. Ikuti aku, Ayu Agung, Omika. Oh, the second winner. In the category of best research method for non-mainstream paradigm, I Gusti Agung Omika Dewi. Okay, applause for for the second winner. Next, and then for, uh, the next for mainstream paradigm. Uh, mainstream, yeah. Mainstream, yeah. Okay, the first, uh, the best paper uh, for main, uh, method for mainstream paradigm. This article has sustainability report, practice and quality of CSR discourse and political connection to company perform with governance mechanism as moderating. Ah. Uh, we, we. Saraswati. Bu Wiwi, silakan maju ke depan. Okay. Uh, uh, sec and the second knowledge trans knowledge transfer to improving accounting learning during uh, pandemic. Name. Congratulations. Yeah. 
the second the second nur rafita hanum the yes Azum. please please uh, thank point you in out for nur rafika hanum okay. congratulations yeah. thank you for rafika hanum terima kasih thank you the criteria the best Reset, uh, the best reset finding uh, has it a corporate fraud or togetherness with one to you choose the name eh? for normal eh, uh, best reset, reset for the best research finding Oh, congratulasi oh, for the best the research yeah. finding. Thank you. Oh, yes, the Zoom. Yeah. Corporate truth are together with one to uh, you choose. Ya. Yeah. Panitia uh, bisa minta tolong untuk the best research finding. Research finding. Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Uh, Ibu Lucy. Congratulations, Ibu Lucy. Thank you, thank you very much. The domination. Eh. Oh, sustainability report, practice, and quality of CSR dis disclose the political connection to company. Bu Wiwi. Oh, Bu Wiwi. Oh. Congratulations, Ibu Wiwi. Second winner. The four criteria. Uh, okay. Uh, the best research novelty. Novelty. Uh, the article title Unduh Wonging Pakarti. The moral root of business governance principle. The name. Opur, Opur Wening. Well, congratulations. The best uh, research novelty. Ayo, maju. Yeah. Yes, the, congratulations. Uh, wow, this is very productive, yeah. Uh, the second title, Domination of Accountability, Peace of on the Belief of Good and the Ancient. The domination of accountability. Newman Ari. Oh. 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 The title has. Uh, Selamat Pak Wawan. Next, next. The best research contribution for practice. Novelty. Bukan, uh, for contribution for practice. Ya. Yeah. The first winner, family ownership, gender and earning management. Maybe ini uh, Pak Ari, Pak Ari Kuncoro, from UNS. Yeah. Congratulations, Pak Ari. Uh, the second, uh, identification of culture heritage, uh, valuable accounting process. Yeah. Ibu Gustin. Thank you. 
Bu Gustin? Yes, I'm on the room. Zoom room. Congratulations, Ibu. Thank you very much. Ibu Gustin Tanggulungan, congratulations for the second winner as the best research contributions for practices. Okay, the five criteria, the best research contribution for theorities. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the best paper uh, has it a uh, scorekeeper of MS Math Sustainability Reporting Action and Reflection by the Content Educator. The name? <laughs> Nining Ika Wahyuni. Wow, congratulations, Bu Nining. As the first winner at the best research contributions for theorities. Okay, the second, uh, a concept framework on the board okay, IT you. governance and IT capability impact on the firm performance, the moderating role of environmental surveillance. Name Magdalena. Marianti. Oh, oh. oh. congratulations, Ibu Magdalena. Oh. Oke, okay, the six ya ini. The six, uh, uh, seven, seven, seven criteria determination. Of sustainability manufacture in small and medium tempe food industry with a green management approach. Pak Purnomo. Congratulations, as the first winner. Edisi. Yes, congratulations, Pak Purnomo. Applause one more. Okay, the second winner of factor after influencing auditor going constant opinion. The researcher Romaning Tiang Ritari Putri. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, on room. Ibu Romaning Tia, Ibu yeah, or Bapak? In room. On room. In room. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Nice. Okay, the last criteria, best presenter. Uh, the best uh, article has said cooperative growth or togetherness with one, two, you choose. Who? Bulusi. Okay, congratulations, si Bulusi as the best presenters. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Oke, okay, the, the second, uh, yeah, the second winner Pancasila Peace Sustainability, Sustainable Finance Holistic Deconstruction Towards Sustainability in Indonesia. Ikuti Ayu Agung Omika. Congratulations, Thank Ibu Gusti Ayu Agung Omika. Thank you. Thank you so much. Presenter. Presenter. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Pak Koiru, uh, and also teams for uh, uh, announcing for the winners. This is really great. And congratulations for all of the winners and for them who are not winners yet. It's all right because we, we still have a, a opportunity, yeah, Prof, for next year or maybe on the next opportunity. Uh, Prof Eko, do you want to say something? Yeah. Oh. Closing, right? Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Tika, and thank you for all. And you still uh, be loyal, you know, uh, present in the last season, announcing the winners, eight categories, one and two. So all together, 16 winners, basically. Uh, <clears throat> dengan demikian, selesai sudah. 
uh, acara kita seharian ya mulai dari jam 8 8 uh, am up to now is uh, 17.11. and again i apologize if any mistakes uh, during we per we serve you as a participant as moderators and also as uh, presenters you know and again i apologize and we would like to see you in the next uh, occasion thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you very much so um, thank you bro comment before stay here on even on zoom we are already in the end of the event Thank you very much for your attendance together with us. Hope we can actively contribute to strengthen the situations together. Got the doctorate degree smoothly and keep in touch and strong and stay healthy. I'm Kartika Putri Kumalasari as the host today. Close the event and see you on the next event. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, everyone.